Hey everybody, it is Wednesday night and it's time for Super Geeked Up! (laughs) What's up everybody? Uh, My name is Jeff. Thank you for joining Super Geeked Up. This is your live weekly geeky pop culture show. We talk zany geeky topics, play fun geek themed improv games. Uh, From the dog pound, I am apparently joined by Arsenio Hall, aka Francis, uh, my co-host. How's it going? Well, first off, I'd like to say that Sky Clone, <laughs> <laughs> the potentially green Guy Fieri of um, a fine cartoon. What was oh, I forget the name of the cartoon? Or Sky, Dancers. Uh, Sky Dancers. It was the cartoon for Sky Dancers. Yeah, um, I could see. I could see the Guy Fieri. <laughs> I could yes! see a little bit of the Guy Fieri. Yeah, it, missing the yes! hair. He needs the hair though. I love. I love I how know, you always bring up stuff that's on the Guy pre-show Fieri. that no one in the audience knows what we're talking about. Uh, <laughs> it's fun. We like to bring it in. You know, bring all right, it to the fold. that's Francis, folks. Ignore him. Uh, our guest, who you should not ignore, uh, are from the Quid Pro Roll podcast. It is Alex Smith and Josh Maltby. Hello, welcome. Hi. Hello. <laughs> super, super guys. Can be here? All right, Dale. Great. Thank you for we're thrilled to have you here. We uh, haven't seen I, you since Dragon Con, so like I'm super excited. <laughs> Oh, thank you. That's very nice to hear. Uh, yes, we met at uh, we met, I met both of them at Dragon Con, and we did some. Uh, well, Alex, Alex and I did some panels together. Alex and Josh did some other panels uh, as well there. <laughs> um, so, uh, but yeah, we had an awesome fun. Uh, that was actually your guys' first time there, correct? It was my first time at oh. Dragon Con ever. It was not Josh's. Oh, okay. uh-huh. I'm the one who decided my first time at Dragon Con to do like one digital panel, four in-person panels, and two live shows. That was me. that was my decision. Uh, hey, I think that's a great decision. That's very similar to what I did. On my <laughs> well, first you time. did like 30 shows and panels all told, or something. Thank you for inflating that. I appreciate it. I did 17, <laughs> but I, I appreciate the 30. Like, where's Jeff? Probably on a panel. That was 90% of the, where's Jeff, you think? <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate that. She, you need to be my spokesperson. Uh... <laughs> hey, I got a great tagline from her, so, you know. I mean, come on <laughs> you did. Char- you're charming and effervescent, Alex said before the show. I'll get you a t-shirt made. Yes. Oh, my God. You have to, because, so, Francis, we finally got, I got him to agree to come to Dragon Con next year, because I've been trying to get him for years. Oh, you have yeah, to wear yeah. that shirt at Dragon Con, Francis. Charming and effervescent. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, sure. I'm and down. you won't know who I am the entire time, because <laughs> Jeff literally had me engage with one of his panels from the audience and had no idea who I was <laughs> until I partially lifted my wig, and he was like, oh, it's Alex. <laughs> oh, well, you were cosplay. That was, all right. That, it was really bad on my part. It was, it was really like, funny. I thought he was just like being nice to me because it's me. And I was like, oh no, he just doesn't have any idea who I am right now. It great. was the What's Your Pairing panel, which obviously we do on the show all the time, Francis. You're yes, very familiar. Yes, but we do it yes. as a separate panel there. And and we had our biggest crowd ever for that panel at Dragon Con. People were super into it. Uh, and yeah, there was this Mary Marvel in the back. And I was like, oh, wow, she's great. She's giving us, she's really into this. And she's giving us all this stuff. And she came up afterwards talking to me. And I'm like, and she's like, it's Alex. I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> the, whole, the whole time during the panel, I had no idea. I will tell you, Jeff, the next time you do the pairing thing, like, I will be there. I, am, I, what, I That's what you told me after the panel. You're like, you must put pairing. me on this next year. <laughs> Oh, wow. You do not know, I am the super shipper of everything always, and I was going to go to law school. It was a panel that I was made to be on. <laughs> I wow. live here. All right. Uh, All right. Good. I'm, we sh- I mean, now we got to change one of the games. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. You're right. We should have done. Oh, uh, well. That's all right. Well, we can have our, we'll have, we have to have him back. Next time is fine. Time. Next time is great. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, thank you, Lester's mate. Jeff does all the panels. Yeah, he's the Richard, the, Dragon, Richard Dragon of panels. Of panels. Yeah. <laughs> That's my t shirt. That's going to be. Yeah, you're the You'll be charming to okay, I'll make you that shirt then. Thank <laughs> you. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. What are we doing here? Oh, we should do a show. Uh, anyway, folks, uh, we just like to start. Hi, everyone, by the we way. We like to start Hello. with our first. We're going to do, uh, we're going to have some super geeky questions for you. We're going to play some games. We're going to play Universal Translator. We haven't done that in a while. And we're going to do superhero experts later in the show and talk to these fine folks about quid pro roll. But first, Francis is going to kick us off with our first super geeky question. Yes. I just want to let people know that there was something strange going on in my neighborhood. So I had to call somebody. And it was Ghostbusters. And <laughs> Ghostbusters Afterlife is coming out tomorrow. So really, we want to know from you out there, what is your favorite paranormal or just one normal, if you want, movie. All right. Was there also something weird going on in your neighborhood? Yes. Yeah. Usually, usually there's a lot. There's a, yeah, strange, weird, 
Um, I forget this. I forget that the second verse two theme. Yeah. Oh, oh that's the Bob, well. That's, I just think of the Bobby Brown song. We just don't. We pretend that we don't. We don't mention it. <laughs> Try not to talk about it. It's a great yeah, song, yeah, though, man. That Ghost, song. Ghostbusters Two was a lot of questions that yeah. weren't answered and shouldn't have been answered. The song no. is great, though, man. It's like, why were the sewers yeah, covered in the thing that you make big nuggets from? You know, <laughs> <laughs> like what is that all about? You but really anyway. want the answer to that because you stop eating McDonald's. <laughs> you don't exactly. want the answer to that. <laughs> I shouldn't be asking uh, these questions. <laughs> Tammy, yes, we were, we, were, we were on one true tangent once again, one as tangent, we like yeah, to do yeah. on the show. Uh, Kathy says, hello, Kathy. Hey, everybody watching. Thank you so much for watching. We appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Please put your comments in the chat. Uh, and if you're watching in post, thank you just as much. Uh, <laughs> the haunting just... is Kathy's answer anyway. And I want to say uh, one thing about that movie. I watched, remember um, Mad TV? Yes. Uh, they gave away twist that to that movie on in that show and i was i was pissed ever since they tell you what happens in that movie. how, how much like after such the movie a huge thing about it though well, it was i don't remember how long ago it was but yeah it was it was a you know because that's a big secret right like that's the big twist just like with fight club there's a twist but you nobody no but people don't share that they they keep it to themselves because they want people to watch it and experience it for themselves i never got a chance to watch the haunted and I was told the secret. My God. All right. <laughs> no, that bummer. sucks. It's terrible. That's no, a bummer. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Carrie says the others with Nicole Kidman is great. Oh, it's the uh, others. I'm sorry. Is that the one, with, is that the that's one, the one with, you're like, talking that's about? The, that's the one I was talking about. Yeah. <laughs> is that the one with like the kids that have an allergy to light? Yes. Thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah. I really liked that movie. The others. Mm-hmm. Because it's on the right. and I thought it was related. I'm like, which I, I didn't remember what the movie name was, but you're right. It's the others. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's go to our guest. Let's go to Alex. I, just before the show started, I did not I did not know this when I came with this question, but she says these are are basically all the movies she watches, pretty much, are these types of movies. So I it's be a I hard love, choice. I love supernatural movies so much. I really, especially love ghost horror movies. Um, so I'm going to tell you that my answer to this is my answer right this second. Tomorrow it'll be a different answer, and the day after a different one. Um, but the one that's coming to mind right now is there is a Korean horror movie called white and it is about a haunted pop song and there is this girl group that takes it and uses it and becomes really really big but whoever is the lead singer in that song keeps getting picked off one by one by one be and it's actually a really interesting look into how toxic korean pop idol culture is uh, yeah. But it's also like, you know, a spooky ghost movie. So I really, really like that one. And the problem is, is that the haunted pop song is super catchy. <laughs> so you're always sitting there like, oh, no, as, no. Mm. Yeah. As K-pop <laughs> tends to be, yes. <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, let me get some chats here and I'll go to Josh. Scorpio says, I like white noise a lot. Very cool concept. I used to fall asleep to TV static. All right. Uh, Brianna BB, hey, welcome. I think this might be a first time viewer here. Hi, yeah. Bri. Oh, uh, friend of yours. All right, awesome. Well, welcome. Thank you for supporting the orphanage. Uh, she says that is a movie that I showed her. Uh, it's a it's a Guillermo del Toro movie. Oh, really? Um, that is a movie about an orphanage that is potentially haunted and you find out i'm not going to give away the twist because it's a very twist focused movie um i'm not gonna i'm not gonna pull of the others um (laughs) but it it's it's a really interesting movie it's a really dark kind of underrated gem um but it's it's kind of a downer but it's got the same kind of vibe as like the woman in black slash woman in black 2 kind of dealio there's a woman in black too. Uh, yeah, you know, honestly, you don't need to watch it. Okay. <laughs> watch the first one and say it ends there, and you will have okay. a better life. Oh wow, oh, I didn't know. Oh. Uh, Jalou says uh, there was a compilation of stories done by Steven Spielberg called "Amazing Stories." I remember I watched it as a kid. Uh, one of the stories was a cartoonist who became a B seventeen ball turret fighter who was saved by his drawn of wheels. I remember. Oh my god, that's oh, the I one episode that. I remember. That's yes, amazing, I remember Jaloo. that too. That's the one episode. The fact that you guys remember. remember this, I thought I I was one hundred percent like this isn't a real thing. No, uh, yeah, well, no, it's yeah, uh, no. it's before your time, <laughs> probably. <laughs> Depending how how old. Uh, well, you know, I'm just saying you guys are young. Uh, you're youthful. <laughs> you're youthful looking. <laughs> no. no, all right. I, I don't, don't know. know. <laughs> I don't know. She's like, no, nah, I'm not that young actually. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> 
Uh, Christmas Carol, Chaz says, oh, yeah, sure. There's ghosts. Not sure, yeah, three, yeah, four that's... ghosts, actually, in that. Yeah. Um, ghost Hunters from Lister's Mate. It's quadrinormal, yeah. Uh, ghost Hunters. Wait, the, the one where they actually... Yep. Is, is, quadri- is Ghost Hunters the one where they hunt? Like, it's the, the kind of the live reality show? The TV show. They... The TV show. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Right, yeah. Uh, he mentions, Julie mentions Casper. Well, it's about ghosts, so it could be paranormal. Sure. He's a ghost. Mm-hmm. There's ghosts in it. He's right? friendly. He is. He's not, he's charming and effervescent as well. <laughs> His uncle's not so much, but him, he's cool. Uh, Scorpius says, movies about scary ghosts are the best because how do you really fight that? That's why you need the Ghostbusters. Anyway, yeah. Josh, what's your choice? Um, I think I'm going to go with Children of the Corn. Wow. Classic. Oh, look at you. Yeah. It's yeah. also one of my favorite movies to yell, uh, what are you doing? Stop it. Oh, God. <laughs> no. What? A spooky garage, and you're just going to wander in there? What are you doing? What? It should be reason. a second to remember why Children of the Corn counts as paranormal, because for a second I was like, Go- children aren't inherently cryptids, Joshua. <laughs> And then I remember, oh, right, that's the, true. The children murder the entire town. You think that's just a normal thing kids do? You know, <laughs> there's a classic of literature that would back me up in saying yes. Oh, boy. All right, then. Well, all right. On that happy note, I guess <laughs> uh, that, I'll go with a totally different answer, which I just thought of. Though we've talked about it recently on the show. Uh, I'm going to go with the real Ghostbusters animated series from... Oh, there you go. Sure. 80s, 90s, I guess, late 80s, the early 90s, maybe. It's a uh, minus series. gorilla with the uh, hat, then. Not No, not that one. Not I did I did really enjoy that one, too, though. Yeah. But I'm going with the real Ghostbusters because I loved Slimer, particularly in that series. Slimer was the best in that cartoon. He was like, he was like their sidekick, basically. He actually helped them out. Uh-oh. Um, all right, let's see here. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, Tammy, of course. A Beetlejuice, Casper, mm-hmm. Adam's Family, House of the Clock in the Walls, Rocky Horror. She oh, wow. prefers camp and comedy to horror. Buffy the Vampire Slayer with Paul Rubin's death scene. Nice. <laughs> I'm with you, Tammy. I'm more of a yeah, campy or comedy one as well. Uh, J- uh, Carrie says, The Wraith, a fantastically 80s futuristic paranormal movie that includes a ghost car. I swear a it's good. ghost car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in the 80s. Oh, interesting, Carrie. I want to see this yeah. now. The car that kills. Just like the... Oh, what was the one with the bed that kills? There's a bed that kills. Oh, there. deathbed. The bed that eats. <laughs> the, the, the bed that oh, eats God. Yes. The bed that eats people, yes. <laughs> I'm uh, going to tell you right now, when it comes to stupid, obscure movies that are really dumb, I got you. Okay, good. Because I will I will mention some, I think. Even though that's not my choice. <laughs> but, I like bad movies more than I like good uh, movies. By the way, so in the chat. Weird repertoire. Okay. Uh, Brianna <laughs> says Slimer was so great. Ah, what, what an intelligent pers- uh, friend you have here. Agrees with you, Slimer being great. <laughs> a, Wait, a, tr- Bri- a true person of culture. Yes, <laughs> yes. Who likes the real Ghostbusters? That's the, really the key to test of your culture. Uh, hello, Lizzie. I'm glad you joined us. We're talking our favorite paranormal films. You can chime in the chat. Uh, mm-hmm. Phil Francis, what are your choices? So I was going to originally say Teeth, but that's not paranormal. Um. But I will pick uh, Frighteners, actually, with uh, Michael J. Fox. Oh, oh yes, that is Michael J. Fox. Fox? Michael J. Fox. Michael J. Fox. He does wear socks, though. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. As far as I know, he wears socks in that right. movie. So, yeah. You're not, you're not far off. But, yeah, I don't know. It's, 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 again, it's kind of in the vein of comedy and fun. And uh, it's just a good, it's a good time. It's just a good time. Uh, Terry says, has Alex seen The Stuff? The stuff. That almost sounds like I'm being asked a question. If I answer wrong, I've shown that I'm not part of the cult and will. No, be no, better. no, not at all. Um, Tammy and everyone are awesome in this. I'm really not, just curious. I, I don't know that I've seen this movie. That doesn't sound familiar to me. Uh, but like, is it is it weird and bad? Because I'm here. If it's weird and bad, tell, tell, tell us about it, Tammy. Is it troll too bad? <laughs> is, it, <laughs> is it twisted pear bad? Oh, there you go. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Uh, Neil Neil, anything Neil Breen has ever done ever is just automatically worse than the room. Wow, oh, that's that's Uh-oh. bold. Oh, Josh says the stuff was awesomely bad. Yes. Oh wow. Well, goodbye, my <laughs> afternoon on Sunday. <laughs> the stuff. 
What well, a there you go. The stuff. <laughs> really anything. Yeah, because I was thinking, man, I, you know, there's so many good, but they're not. I mean, they're just horror movies, not paranormal movies, like, um, Human Centipede or something. Like that. Uh, no, come on, don't, never mention that again on the show. Like, too. even I uh, have a hard line on. Yeah, stop. On human First one is. Tammy says, time. took me years to be able to eat marshmallow fluff after watching the stuff, apparently. <laughs> oh, It Follows is pretty dope. Oh, yeah, there you go. All right. I'm yeah, trying to... I don't... Like, like I'm going through, like, Crimson Peak was super good if you're looking for, like, a more recent release. Mm. Um, like, I, I also, I'm a sucker for anything Guillermo del Toro does. Pan's Labyrinth is just oh, that's great. beautiful. Yeah. Amazing movie. Uh, other than the fact that for some reason... In every movie he does, Guillermo del Toro has a scene where somebody's face gets destroyed and I can never watch it. I don't know why this is a thing he does, but it is every single scene, every single movie he does has a scene where someone's face gets destroyed. I think we looked this up when we were watching Crimson Peak and Guillermo del Toro was like, yeah, the face is something not a lot of people work with and I'm comfortable working with it. (laughs) <laughs> and it's really horrifying to watch a face get destroyed. Wow. Okay. Which accurate. For somebody who like apparently like in interactions with him is pretty wholesome, I'm terrified by the things that come out of Guillermo del Toro's mind. <laughs> Sorry, I had, to, Francis, I had to get what did a you movie. get to show us? Well, because I forgot about my favorite paranormal movie. Jesus Christ, Vampire Hunter. <laughs> oh. The power of Christ impales you. Um <laughs> <laughs> Forgot about this movie. I need to. I need. I should have used that. It's, it's paranormal. It's that's got... a great tagline, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So there you go. I had to show off that I actually own this movie, and it is fantastic. If you like that's good, magical cheesy film. <laughs> uh, Lichardsman says he's seen bits and pieces of the stuff. It's about an alien who comes to Earth and disguises himself as yogurt. Brad Garrett from the early days of SNL is in it. What? 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 <laughs> yogurt. <laughs> Oh I mean, oh, I man. guess. So do people like eat it and then it takes over them when it goes inside? Maybe I don't know. I God, it's have... such a better. It's such a better interpretation if you just think of it as yogurt from Spaceballs, and it's like oh, yes, its idea yes. of being subtle and like you know on the down low. It's so much funnier. <laughs> yogurt. Uh... I'm just so confused. Oh, 1985. <laughs> oh wow. Are you doing research now? I am, yeah, because I need to know. Yes, it even start the it even starts with the the trailer has them filling cups of yogurt called the stuff. So I, I now need to also <laughs> a delicious mysterious goo that oozes from the earth is marked as the newest dessert sensation. So there you go. It's a I'm goo sorry, that oozes, it from, oozes the from the earth. <laughs> it oozes from the earth. <laughs> yeah, let me scoop up this, you know. Delicious from the ground, and that's it's like pudding. It's great. I truffles are pretty popular. <laughs> truffles are mushrooms, Joshua. They are not goo. How do you know the stuff isn't fungus based? <laughs> that's all I'm saying. It's alive, <laughs> just like real yogurt. Does she always call, does she always call you Joshua when she disagrees with you? Yes, <laughs> mostly yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> Um, yum, delicious earth yogurt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Next time you go into a uh, TCPY, so can I have some uh, delicious earth yogurt, please? I am not alien, I am human being. <laughs> delicious earth yogurt, please. Oh, fuck, this should have been one of my answers, Scorpio. I love the Blair Witch. Uh, he's still trying to get his girlfriend to watch it. The um, original or the remake? The no, or- oh, no, 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 the original because. <laughs> the- <laughs> Because the Blair Witch Project, I know this is kind of like super unpopular opinion. It was really interesting for what it did at the time, especially oh, yeah, yeah. using yeah. the internet as a viral marketing tool. We've talked about that, yeah, absolutely. But it doesn't super duper hold up in the modern era of horror. I don't. I haven't think. seen it recently, so I don't well, know. It does. But, hmm. what, yeah, I mean, first off, that's another movie. If you know, it, it, use, it loses its appeal. Mm-hmm. If you know what's going mm-hmm. on, like I think Franz and I have both talked about. Uh, like I went in right at the, t- at the time with the internet campaign they did they were genius like I, I thought I went out of the movie thinking that all that was real that actually happened same same and oh, I was yeah. I was fucking scared on my mind like I was like I'm never going to West Virginia ever oh uh, <laughs> probably can still hold up yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yes you're right now, I mean, nowadays it probably won't 
work as well, right? If you know that stuff. But then it was brilliant. It was brilliant for the time, like you said. Yeah. There's a there's a theory online that I think gives it some new life. Uh, anybody who doesn't want spoilers for the Blair Witch, cover your ears for like the next twenty seconds. <laughs> I'll do this when he's done. Oh, there you go. <laughs> um, the people she's traveling with are plotting to murder her. Somebody just yeah, said that, right? Somebody, on show the other... said that, yeah. It was uh, Matt pa Matthew Patrick on Game Theory. That's right. Is the one yeah. who did uh, that theory. But some, one of our guests brought that up, that theory they'd heard, too. Like, so that's I don't, I'm not buying into that theory at all. Uh, it's a really interesting way to look I at that so. movie, if you do. Mm -hmm. The only yeah. problem is, is that, uh, and I don't know how true this is, so take my information on this with a grain of salt, uh, was that they actually had an actress set up to be the Blair Witch, who was supposed to be shown in a couple of scenes. But because the they had the actors doing the camera work, uh, she was completely missed while they were doing the running and everything. And you were supposed to hear like um, Heather say, "What the fuck is that?" Yeah. At, while they were running, but they never got to see her on camera, so they just cut that whole bit out. Oh. And it makes it so that it like it's way cooler to think of the murder theory, but also it sort of completely ruins the murder theory. In its entirety. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> right. He actually did it. <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, you did it. Yeah. Scorpio says that was the most clever spoiler warning ever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, Lister's mate says he had an irrational fear of bowling alleys for 15 years because of the movie Beware the Blob, which I'm assuming is set in a bowling alley. <laughs> oh, no. I, you, uh, <laughs> maybe. Not, not that there's a scene in a bowling alley, the whole movie beginning to end in yeah. the same no, bowling I hope so. Alley. It's in a bowling alley. The blob just hangs out in the bowling alley. Isn't that the one where the blob is just like an ever-expanding mass that just consumes things? Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, you've seen this, Francis? Uh, if it's the original one, yeah. I think it's the original one is, is the one where it, can, it just grows and grows and grows the more it, can, the more it eats. That All just right. sounds like me at 2 a.m. when I don't think anyone's <laughs> watching me eat a tube of cookie dough out of the fridge with no spoon. <laughs> I mean, yeah, as if that's weird. <laughs> Just bite into it like it's a beefy five-layer burrito. Uh, all right. Uh, Julie, says, <laughs> Julie says, interesting yeah. to mention you have the sixth sense. Oh, you're right, Julie. That's totally a ghost move, paranormal movie. It's, it's, like, it's a great choice. Sixth sense is amazing. Yeah. Um, and he mentions Robert Downey Jr.'s pre-sobriety movie, Heart and Souls, is a heartwarming movie, which oh, I don't yeah. know what that is. yeah. yeah. Is that I about paranormal ghosts? Soul, or the, the new movie, Soul, which is paranormal. But again, oh, of course. Yeah, Soul. You're right. Yeah. Frequency was paranormal-ish. You're right, Scorpio. Absolutely. I mean, that was dead. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Through the ham radio, right? That's how he's communicating? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. Thanks for all those uh, answers, folks. You can still keep them coming. Or if you're watching a post, you can put them in the comment section or tweet it to us at Super Geeked Up. Uh, hey, it's time for our first improv game. Then we're going to talk more to our guest here and play, do some more chatting after that. Our first game is called Universal Translator. So uh, this is where two of us will speak in a geeky language and the other two will translate into English what we're supposedly saying. Uh, before, Oh, my God. Hey, hey, guys, this is an important thing we just got. <laughs> hey. Hello. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't. I think that's this, the first time this, this has ever happened. Might be the first time we've ever gotten this. All right, that's another. Flat. That's funny. All right. How do I, I mean, I guess it was bound to happen eventually after three hundred yeah. and some episodes. But wow, <laughs> that's actually pretty good. You're right. It's it's only they're, oh, they're, still, they're still going. I just blocked different... them too. Why? Why is there twice? Get banned. There we go. Boom. I know. I'll block you again. Can you block me twice? I like. Oh, it says I like. By the way, by the way, instead of blocking, it says I can put the user in a timeout. Yeah, oh god, put him in the corner. Oh, speaking the grudge growl voice. I don't... Oh, the... That'd be so dumb. Oh. So we did actually well, thank you guys for these choices. We actually pre-selected some beforehand, <laughs> but but I Morse... super appreciate the exp... the um why are you like Morse code? Is that what you're laughing at? I love that. <laughs> if I thought the grudge growl voice was there, I would be doing the uh the, the voice because uh I, I just well, like we can switch that sound. Yeah. We can switch it up if you want. Yeah, we can. It do is all. whatever you guys want to do. I no, yeah, here. you're the guest. We're we're cool. I, and whatever. and I am in y'all's house playing with y'all's toys. So all I can do from the grudge is the. Uh, that's that's what he's talking about. 
Yeah. Well, here, we'll, let's, we'll oh, keep it the way we originally we'll planned yeah. it. But you, got, you guys can help us with the scene in the chat. So before the show, we said Josh was going to go. Nobody put Hot spammy teams. in a corner? <laughs> spammy, the spam guy, <laughs> the spam dude. Yeah, the spam oh, So spam nobody guy. put spammy in the corner. Oh, okay. Uh, so anyway, Josh is going to do Hatties. All right. So I guess he'll be Jabba the Hut. And Al, uh, I'm going to translate for him, actually. Uh, yeah, yeah. And Francis, all right, you know what, Francis? We didn't decide what you're going to be, so maybe we can we can get from the chat for you. How about that? Okay, sure. <laughs> do you want to do Morse code or the grudge? No, no, I won't do Morse code. Wait, you were no. so you were you were so excited about it. I don't understand why you want to do it. Now, but in Morse code. <laughs> R.I.P. <laughs> in your throat. I know. <laughs> oh no, that's not good. Now, yeah, but if somebody wants to put a suggestion, I'll, I'm I'm more than happy to 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 do that. No problem. Well, somebody all right. else said Klingon. Yeah, so give us you can give us some more suggestions if you want, folks. Also, give us a scene uh, that we can do here. But what what, what do you what do you want to do, Francis? The ones you saw of the three? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I do. I do, Tammy. You you and me right there. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I mean, if uh, I can, I haven't done Klingon since um, Nana, so I can definitely do Klingon. All right, quick. So we got a Klingon and. Are you gonna be any random random Klingon or a specific Klingon? I mean, I, uh, I'll be Alexander. <laughs> <laughs> My God, <laughs> the lamest one. Great, but perfect for the scene. Here we are. <laughs> I just all right. So we got Alexander from Next Gen and a little bit DS Nine, uh, and we got Job of the Hut, and they are. They are calling the Ghostbusters because there's bothersome neighbor ghosts. That's the scene, I guess, we're doing, all right? Uh, they could also, we could also be taking a cooking class yes. together. Okay, so they're taking a cooking class, and there are ghosts bothering their neighbors and, and them, I guess. All right. <laughs> all right. Very so high I, concept. Yes. I will so, be young Alexander. Not when he gets old with that time travel. Oh, business. you're going to be like a kid? kid. Yes, I'm going to be small. And <laughs> he's this. He's not <clears throat> that small. All right, anyway. He's small. <laughs> but remember, you're talking as a cl- I know, I would be, in Klingon. I'll, yeah, I'll be doing that. I'll be doing, Which is actually going to work because this Klingon probably is not that great. Uh, <laughs> I got it. It's cool. It's amazing. <laughs> All right, so, okay. So he's a he's Alexander. Uh-huh. Uh, Alex is going to translate for Francis. Mm. Josh is <laughs> Jabba the Hutt. I'm going to translate for Josh. <laughs> So, so Francis will kick us off. Alex, you can translate as soon as he's done. Then Josh will say something. I'll translate for him. We'll go back and forth like that until we come to an amazing, hilarious end. Uh, all right. I, I hope. I hope it's Jalou's ending. Trying to film eating a whole tube of cookie dough for OnlyFans. <laughs> come on. I mean, it's, you know, cooking class. You know, it probably is on OnlyFans, right? <laughs> you can lead to that. <laughs> Uh, okay, there, there's. Well, all right. Well, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if we work that in. I won't. I won't be speaking any English yeah. though. Even though I don't think uh, Alexander really spoke any Klingon. That's what I'm saying. It'll be fine if your Klingon's bad because his Klingon was bad. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Okay. He did learn it later though. Mm-hmm. All right. So Francis, kick us off. All right. Pokara, pokoro. So I just opened the tube of cookie dough. <laughs> Yes, open it up and shove it down my huge mouth into my big stomach uh, and pet that Wookiee while you're at it. A choco Wookiee, kapla kapla. Wookiee victory, victory. <laughs> I don't understand why the Wookiee was involved. I thought I was going to get paid just for eating this tube. Eo de buta, chica No, you're getting paid to feed me and dance. Dance! <laughs> dance right now. Now nah, I'm good, fam. You all be just Oh, you are very insolent. I will feed you to my rank car if I could just find the right button. <laughs> oh, chok pak parak, tak chiki ki pak. 
Oh, you mean this button right here? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Can we go forward? I mean, that's kind of... All right, fine. We just want to stop there. Like, well, because I'm like, what, what else is there to say? Yeah, all right, we'll just stop. That's a good, that's a good, that's a good scene. Any point. Alexander turned the tables there on old Jabba. <laughs> I mean, we could do a second scene if that was too quick for y'all. No, that was fine. That was perfect. It's, you know, leave them wanting more, right? I yeah. have nothing more in my life, though, than a craving to eat cookie dough out of a tube right now. Well. I kind of do, too, yeah. <laughs> what was y'all's OnlyFans? Right. OnlyFans. <laughs> it's, that's super, like, slash super geeked up. <laughs> yeah. Guys, that was, that was what that, like, 18 and naked HD I'm waiting on you stream was. <laughs> Yeah, they were. They're just winning. That's right. Oh my goodness. They're dressed uh, like Jabba the Hutt and eating a tube of cookie dough. It is a very specific fetish, but the two people in the world that have it pay handsomely. Hell yeah! Wow. Yeah, you got you got to find your niche fetish. That's right. That's how you make money, man. Hey, Alex. Hey, welcome, man. So good to see you. I guess are you are you out at Alex? Actually, is usually out at sea uh, on a ship. But uh, let's. If you're back, welcome back. Thank you for watching. Yeah. Uh, so great to see you here. Uh, we just finished our Universal Translator game, so you still got a lot of show to watch. And uh, Francis, you want to do your voice here? Oh, Wookie. Oh, my. <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, all right. A little mixing, little mixing the, you know, Star Wars and Star Trek there. Nice. Oh, yes. Uh, all right, guys. Thank you uh, for all those suggestions for Universal Translator. Why do I suddenly see Chewy in a sparkly bikini, Tammy? Yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> funny you should ask. For $15 oh, a month. Wow. No, I... <laughs> 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 All right. Well, let's talk to our awesome guests about what they do. Uh, yeah. Alex and Josh have an awesome podcast called Quid Pro Roll. And why don't you guys tell our viewers about that? So Quid Pro Roll is a D&D actual play podcast that I wrote this very serious, like, epic sprawling tale about dragons and bringing the balance of magic back to the world. And then my players decided to make things like a self-care obsessed kobold wizard and an over-the-hill professional wrestler. <laughs> Everything I have learned about professional wrestling has been one against my will and two because of this podcast. <laughs> By the way, I'm sorry. Oh my Wait, god, have, it's the have... cheese girl. <laughs> I knew oh. it. I knew it. Oh my god, your fan is in the chat. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Somebody said uh, that. I can feel it. Somebody, somebody <laughs> thank, snitched. Thank you, Josh. So, <laughs> I, yes, I will be fully transparent. I asked Josh before the show to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I like Josh. Do me a solid. Uh, as I was talking to you on the pre-show, <laughs> but now you have to tell it if you don't mind. You need to tell the story you so, told us on the pre-show. Oh, of course. So uh, there are those Subway-style pizza restaurants like Blaze and Mod and all that. And I was at a Blaze Pizza, and I didn't know until I was, you know, having them put stuff on my pizza that they have goat cheese. And I was like, "Can you put a little more?" No, sorry. Can you a little more? You know, honestly, if you can just keep going, and they just keep spoon and the goat cheese on i go okay cool that'll do it and they kind of like look at me and then look at the pizza then they look back at me and then they look at the like now almost empty thing of goat cheese and they're like okay is that everything and i'm like yeah and they take it and they put and i hear the, the i see the manager come up and kind of like gesture i think he was like where did all the goat cheese go i just refilled this thing and the uh person that had made my pizza was trying to like subtly point at me and i saw her and i heard her go no, you don't understand. She took all the goat cheese. And then uh, I came back another day and the same lady that had made my pizza uh, was there. And after I go it, I see her talk to, after I like go and get my stuff, she talks to her coworker and she says, no, that's her. That's the goat cheese girl. <laughs> and I can never go back to that Blaze Pizza ever again. I have to go to any other pizza establishment, but never that one. I hope they have a picture of you like by the register and it just says <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. Under no circumstances give her all the goat cheese. 
So this is uh, next year DragCon. That's totally the way I'm introducing you on panels from now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alex Smith, the goat cheese. Goat cheese. Girl. Girl. Uh, Put it on you your on your uh, your little name tag thing. Your card you get. Yeah, That'll the be business my card t-shirt. has it. Oh, there that's, you go. <laughs> that, that'll be my that'll be my t-shirt that I have. Uh, really so that's right, folks. Oh my God, it's the goat cheese girl. Thank you, Josh, for doing that. <laughs> Because we uh, made Brian- the joke that one of the people that worked there is going to be a, li- a watcher of this yeah. show. <laughs> so Brianna said there's never enough goat cheese. And she says it was four times. Was she with you? It was four <laughs> times the normal amount of goat cheese. Was she with you? Yes. <laughs> oh, we got a witness. Thank you, Brianna, for confirming that. Bri can also and- confirm we were roommates for seven years. Oh, she wow. has witnessed the amount of goat cheese I have put on things. And it is borderline inhuman. <laughs> Uh, by the way, hey, Marks. Marks joined us. He says, Goat Cheese is the goat greatest of all time. There you go. There you go. Agreed. Jalou says, when you order at Starbucks, is the drink labeled for Goat Cheese Girl? <laughs> <laughs> does it, instead of Feta, does it just have a picture of Alex where the name should be? Right. <laughs> I was just me doing this. That's, yes. just, that's how they identify it. It's very confusing for new workers at that establishment. You went through whole wow. tubes of goat cheese? Not at like in a single sitting, but like sometimes the tubes are only like this big, man. Gotta, <laughs> gotta make do with what you got. Yeah, all right. Hey, absolutely. Use as much goat cheese as you want. You know, Josh, you have some now you gotta you gotta get a name for yourself like that. You gotta be like <laughs> I don't know what your thing is, but you gotta be the, you know, something, something boy. What, what are you super into? Yeah. I mean, I uh, hmm. <laughs> I don't know that I'm into anything quite enough to be the blank <laughs> to, guy. To, to eat, well, I don't. You, know, you. I mean, I understand you can't match her love of goat cheese. Nah, it's, okay. it's a level of passion I just don't have for most things in my life. Unless, well, as long- oh, I got it. They'll call ah. me the Alex guy. <laughs> <laughs> You're with Alex. <laughs> I love her. Her reaction to that is priceless. That's great. <laughs> This is just wow. me now. Hi. <laughs> Re- uh, representing. Goat Cheese Girl needs to be a fictional name. We give some of the superheroes for future skits. Oh, you're totally right. Let's just oh, use go. that in the game. Yeah, we, uh, yeah. Lady Face Lap and Goat Cheese Girl are going to be like our new two, our new dynamic duo. Tammy is from Wisconsin. She says, respect the cheese. Respect the cheese. Always respect the cheese. Yeah. Got to respect that cheese. Julie wants to know, what is the best packaging for goat cheese, Alex? Because you're the expert now, apparently. Uh, a tube. <laughs> a tube, a tube. Right. Best. To make it easily dispensable, like a giant gogurt. <laughs> <laughs> like also, the... apparently, I just I am now known as the person who eats things in tubes because I want to eat a bunch of cookie dough. And I want to eat a bunch right. of Everything's in a, You only eat things in tubes. I consume is in tubes. <laughs> You know, we were talking about quid pro roll and yeah, just yeah, like yeah, quid yeah, pro roll, I yeah. tangent right, we'll get, very we'll get, hard. Sorry, I know, sorry. It's funny, you know what? I was actually telling him, like, come on, Josh, put it. I thought he was going to do it earlier. And he does it right as soon as you start to talk about your show, which is great. Oh, my God. All <laughs> right, perfect. go. Thank you. By the way, first off, Al, uh, this, his name is actually Alex. So he says, the Alex guy, I'm with it. Mm. Uh, all right, yes, let's get back. Oh, Gogurt. There we go. Gogurt. <laughs> Gogurt. Yeah, Gogurt. All right, let's say let's get back to quid pro roms after that nice yes. goat cheese interruption. If it comforts you, ninety percent of the time we're recording, we say now let's get back to quid pro roll. <laughs> okay. We talked about jazz farts for five minutes. Let's go ahead and continue this podcast. Nice. We uh, briefly debated calling the podcast "Now Back to the Plot" because of how many times <laughs> like, that during the first name. like that's a good name recordings actually, yeah. we were like, we need to get back to what we were actually doing. <laughs> Because the first, um, when when we first recorded, we actually had a test recording to kind of see, like, the party dynamic and how well we mesh together. Um, we had this, like, one dumb throwaway that we'll never see the light of day. And um, it tangented so much. And it was just, like, a one-shot of us sitting down around a snowball mic. It was this terrible garbage audio. And I, I had to be like, guys... Guys, we can't do this in the real podcast. We can't we can't spend 20 minutes talking about anime in the middle of the game. <laughs> what, Which, what, why not? Why not? Yeah, why not? 
now that we're a professional podcast with uh, a sound editor and he does all of our like engineering and everything, we sound great for all the tangenting that we do. <laughs> for all the anime you guys talk about. For all the anime exactly. talk about. Oh my gosh. But no, um, so QPR is my favorite thing that I do in my life ever. Um, I'm really excited that I still get to do it. I'm super excited that I've been able to like go to panels and cons and like meet people like y'all doing this. Um, and I know that there are a lot of, you know, actual play podcasts out there, but uh, ours is, in my opinion, one of the dumbest. So uh, <laughs> it's got that going for it. Um, and it, you have me just constantly like pulling the party being like, come on, please guys. I wrote a really cool story. I wrote a plot line. It's this character's so cool. If you just talk to her for five seconds and then it's like, no, we will wrestle an old man to get the permitting system of this town to be revoked so that you can put on wrestling demonstrations without permits. Oh, the money goes to an orphanage. Doesn't matter. Let's kill this old man. <laughs> wow. I wish I was not actually saying something that happens in one of our episodes there was no killing of old men the fighting was staged oh uh, good we did defeat the old man okay good. well priyana says great sound for all the wrestling and food appreciation particularly soup <laughs> bless you thank you sorry i'm allergic to compliments <laughs> <laughs> well all right so so josh who, who do you play then in it uh, I play the half elf arcane trickster rogue Solanar Vakis. Does he sound and like that? Or she? Yes. Th this is precisely what he sounds like. This is his normal speaking voice. I like all that the voice. time. That's pretty good. Uh, pretty someone good. said that it was uh, the guy who plays Bob from Bob's Burgers. Oh, I and can't I can't hear unhear it. Yeah, I can't either now that you said that. <laughs> New story title, The Killing of Old Men, Tammy says. Uh, by the way, hello, hello, Martha. Thank you for watching. It's great to have you here. Uh, I love your icon. Oh, here, I'll put it back <laughs> up. That's actually Francis's uh, girlfriend. Oh, yeah. yeah Martha. Who has wonderful taste in video games. Oh, who is that? <laughs> who, who introduced her to that, Francis? Oh, that was me. Yeah. <laughs> That's what got Persona? us started. Persona 5 is great, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right there you go martha you're a big hit already uh on the show <laughs> all right cool uh let's see here so now how so how often do you guys release once a week on average there'll be one like around the holidays we take a break uh mostly <clears throat> so our precious beloved sound editor does not run through a brick wall head first that would be uh um, gabriel perez right that would be uh, mm -hmm. the wonderful and championed Gabriel oh, Perez. He, folks, you saw him on our show a few weeks ago. Yeah. We get to see the connections. Yeah. <laughs> you, just, you see the you see the, the the floating equations around my face. Now, yeah. <laughs> every every like every since Dragon Con, every guest basically has been from Dragon Con. <laughs> like, <I'm> just, <laughs> you, meet, you meet cool people, man. Yeah. It's, I'm just saying. Well, just especially when you do 17 panels. Oh well, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of networking. <laughs> yeah, it's a. It's a you got to have a lot of cast members, man. You meet a lot of people. You you, you shake a lot of hands. But I think the last thing I'll say on Quid Pro Roll is we're one of the only actual play podcasts I've heard where every person involved in it is a professional DM. Oh, including our God. audio engineer. Oh, that's cool. nice. Okay. Excellent. That is good. That is a good feat. Yeah. Uh, folks, you can go to bit.ly slash quid pro role uh to uh, find them and check out all their episodes uh they can also i'm assuming you probably search for it on their favorite podcast mm. platform of oh choice absolutely there. yeah we are everywhere Unusually i just made enough. us a TikTok. there's a lot of quid pro roll out there right now the majority of our downloads come from pandora a service i did not know was still popular and super active and oh, for cool. listening to podcasts i need I need to go there. <laughs> we, I didn't know that. We love I, the people. Oh, wow, Pandora. Good but job, Pandora. As confused as everyone else. I, I mean, I'm. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, I don't. I don't remember. I remember. I remember that name. Oh, yeah. yeah, Pandora. Sure. I didn't. Yeah. Know, I didn't know it's like you take a long drag on a cigarette and you go. I haven't heard <laughs> that name in years. Uh, I heard that. It's been a while. That name. 
I know that name. Uh, by the way, Martha said, thank you, Alex. I love Morgana. Morgana, however you say it. Morgana. <laughs> Morgana. Morgana, okay. Uh, Mark says, everything is connected. Everything is and connected. And listeners may, I'll be sure to listen to Quid Pro while I'm working out. Hey, great time there to do it. Go. Oh, thank you. That's a, yeah. that's a good time to do it. So Julie wants nothing to know, more... Julie wants to know, do people actually, basically he's asking, make a living being a dungeon master or game master? Do people? Yes. Do any of us? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some people do, Jalou. It is very challenging, obviously, to, to do yeah. that. Um, yeah. There are a couple of different ways you can do it. Thing number one is you can rent yourself out. I don't want to say like a party clown, but it's the best comparison I can think of, uh, where you pay and where some people will pay, pay you an hourly rate to run games for them. That is one of oh. the more popular ways mm -hmm. to do it. Um, it's very gig economy style. Uh, other ways, which is how a lot of it manifests for me, is part of my job is actually run in my job responsibilities. Um, and then there is another facet where if you work for a slash own part of a Dungeons and Dragons event company, like Josh, uh, <laughs> you run tables and you run games as a large portion of that job. Mm -hmm. um, gotcha. Honestly, a lot of the job for professional DMing is less DMing and more prep work at getting everything coordinated, not even for the game, just for like the mechanics. It's like regular DMing where 90% of your job is getting everybody in the same room at the same time intending to play the DMV game. <laughs> it's all You're totally up. right. Oh my God. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> uh, well, hey, what, since you mentioned it, what, Alex, what do you, what, what cool thing do you own? as your main job as your job oh uh i own with my best friend a i own a comic book store named alpha comics and games uh that is in richmond virginia the running joke conveniently located in willow lawn uh and part of what alpha did as a because goblins and growlers which is josh's company is very local to richmond and they wanted to work with a local entity Alpha was that entity. Uh, they came to an event that we were running for DMs uh, that they were kind of hoping that they could like take the take the idea and sort of run with it. And then they're like, "Oh, oh no, we can't do this better than they are. We'll uh, we'll just bring them on." Oh, hey, that's Alex, awesome! You want a DM for us? And I was like, "Sure, I guess." We were gonna crib notes and be like, "This is a thing we can do at conventions everywhere." <laughs> Ooh, yeah. And then we were like. No, we can't one up Alex and Gabe. And then we needed a DM for the podcast. Alex's style of DMing was a great fit for that. So we were like, would you be interested in that? And Alex was like, yeah, sure. And we're like, great. Now all we need is a sound editor because we probably can't do that ourselves. And Gabe goes, I went to school for that. <laughs> it was very weirdly convenient. <clears throat> wow. Like it worked out great. That's awesome. It's one wow. of those stars aligned things. And it is yeah. literally my favorite thing in my life is getting to do QP. Oh, that's so nice. That's great. I love hearing that. Though I am very confused at all the people who are asking what my cat was doing. What was Isla doing? Apparently trying to smack the poster. Oh. I assume she was attacking the you wouldn't like me when I'm angry cuckoo poster over my shoulder. Okay. Yeah. Julie wants to know, is it Alpha like the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers robot character Alpha? Uh, it's Alpha for two reasons. Uh, one, it was the only name that was pitched that I didn't hate. Uh, <laughs> and two, it made us appear alphabetically first. Yeah, there you go. That's Because smart. we wanted to be, uh, we wanted to go really 1950s with it and be like, we gotta be the first entry in the phone book. Yeah. We, very, very specific. About you know, that voice was great. I mean, yeah. Because that's, yeah, sure. Yeah, people still use the phone book. <laughs> Yeah, people still use the phone book. They use it to line their bird cages. <laughs> That's all talking like this the rest of the show. Right? <laughs> oh, last time I received a phone book, I don't know what I did with it. I think I recycled oh the darn thing. Where am I? <laughs> <laughs> what year is it? You just transported to the 50s, Francis. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I'm joining you on the way, time travel. I don't think that I've already decided on the voice I'm going to use for whatever we do for the next improv game. Uh, okay. I have. Uh, so, yes, actually, uh, Lister's made here is in Galax, Virginia, on the west side of Virginia. He says he'll come to your visit your comic book store sometime. Yes, we would love to see you. And Bree wanted to joke in that the alpha is stands for alphabetical because we organize everything alphabetically. 
Um, well, that's just good, good organizing. <laughs> well, a lot of shops will organize by uh, publisher. Uh, but if you um, don't know the difference between Image and IDW, which a lot of like new comic readers don't, it makes it very confusing when you're like, I just want to read Saga. Who makes it? Who prints Saga? It's like, oh, that's it's probably just... actually a smarter way. You're right. Most stores go like, here's the Marvel. Here's your DC. Yeah. Here's mm -hmm. your image. Or here's your, all the other stuff. Here's your Dark like, Horse. Here's your, yeah. I mean, it's great because then you don't have Marvel, like Marvel Tales right next to Money Shot which is a book about having sex, which is a comic book about having sex with aliens on camera for money. Oh, uh, wait, what is this called? Money Shot? I need to, money I need to go shot. read this. I need to read yeah, this. Yeah, Money Shot, it is a uh, comic book about uh, people who are essentially cam girling, but with aliens. So what most people used Mass Effect for, but a comic book. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of like very weird comics. Like there's one called Sex Criminals. Sex, I was gonna mention yes, I've is, read Sex which Criminals. Which is stellar yeah. Yeah. because it's about a couple that stops time when they have sex. So they use it mm -hmm. to rob banks, which is a great premise. And I'm not sure what they were on when they thought of it. Um, there's also pretty much anything by Mirka and Dolfo is like really sexually charged and really, really good. Um uh, Sunstone, which is has beautiful art, and very oh. frequently I have Sunstone to be like, is... I always have to be like, how old are you before you pick this book up? Because uh, this you is don't a... have like a, a, a an eighteen plus section. We have everything like bagged and boarded and like marked off and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a policy that anytime like books are being bought for kids, we're very clear with whoever's buying it. Hey, by the way, uh, this is this is Walking Dead. This is very adult. Or like, right. hey. Uh, because 90% of the time the kids don't actually super care because they don't look as interesting because they tend to have like very stoic pictures of just like somebody standing like this and they're like, Psh, I don't want that. I want the guy with like 80 laser guns. That's the right. guy I want to read. And then um, bright and flashy. Yeah. Yeah, but you're uh, going to like, we, we seal off our books and stuff like that and we'll be very clear with parents. Uh, the number of dirty looks I've gotten from 12 year olds for telling their parents that the boys walking dead and vampirella probably should be looked at before they decide to buy it yeah. uh oh my god i i am nine thousand percent certain that i have been cursed in some way <laughs> um i just i just looked at money shot thank you for that recommendation <laughs> <I'm> gonna... <laughs> i've got a million of them jeff just say hey alex what should i read for this circumstance and i will go here are 30 so, comics wait, you... that you might enjoy do you deliver <laughs> uh we do we actually do shipping we have a flat five dollar rate oh wow there you go oh nice all right all right good now i know who to go to anytime uh, i need to right? any situ any circumstance she said all right good <laughs> hey the number of times that we'll order like saucy books for people and they're like it's soon it's you know it's for, for i'm like man i'm are you paying me money for this book it's fine i have the supply you have the desire i'm not judging you for reading this book <laughs> Nice. You good. I like good attitude. Hentai novels? That's super chill. Yeah. Just let me get them in. All right, cool. Let me ring you up. We're done. You're fine. Dealers don't ask questions. <laughs> they just the only thing that we judge is the art in like certain Sizzler books and stuff like that because mm -hmm. they have those anthology, those sexual anthology books that they used to print, and the I have questions about some of the drawing choices and some of the coloring choices. But other than that, man, read what you want. I'm not going to judge you. Absolutely. Great. I'm I agree. judge the artist, but not you. All right. Alpha Comics and Games, best comic store in the nation, folks. <laughs> um, I have one question. Well, based on what you just said, I, I think so. There you go. <laughs> so did you, did you, did you yes. guys ever do quid pro roll live at the comic store you do okay not at the, not not at the comic book store there's a uh we did so our first ever live show we were so excited it was in the winter of 2019 oh. and we were like we're gonna keep doing these this is gonna be great and then COVID happened oh. Um, and then the the second time we've done a live show was we were invited as guests at Queen City Anime Convention, and we were able to do a live show, and they gave us an hour, and I did my best. Oh, yeah, I was like, that's I know, that, that's tough for, uh, for a gaming hour. hour. Oof. Oof. I made, look, I was able to wrap it up, and I'm still proud of myself that I gave it a reasonable conclusion. Um, oh, good. 
but yeah, those are the only times that we've been able to like do official live shows. But uh, if any of you guys ever want to see Quid Pro Roll in your area at your local conventions, uh, tell them to invite us as guests and feed us and we'll be stellar. Just just have tubes of food and Alex will be there. <laughs> just I know. Tubes. Just, it's like it, it, those... cookie dough, goat cheese. That's all you <laughs> yeah, need. That, that's, that's in the writer. It's like, must have rollable <laughs> tubes of food. Thank you. <laughs> they put them in like those little hamster gerbil water bottles where you have to like just push up the little, little metal little ball. Little thing, so it's yeah. just cookie dough and goat cheese. The unholy amalgamation. <laughs> but separate. Not together, <laughs> separate. Uh, let me get to some of these chats. By the way, Julu, based on the uh, alpha thing, you're totally right. Companies used to do this in the phone book all the time. They would yeah. call these A's between for their name just to get first. Um, Mark says, Sex Criminals has a TV show in the works. I didn't know that, but I'm not surprised. I'm not sure what the status is, but they are trying. That's wild. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's very I much. Mean, that could very I, much. It's pretty work. translatable. I like. Yeah. There are a lot of comics. I'm like, how are they going to do this? But Sex Criminals, I can see. I can see working pretty well. I'm still skeptical about Sandman. Oh yeah. Okay. Mm. Uh, Bree says so many eight year olds want Deadpool. Yeah. I mean, there's not. I mean, there's sort of kid friendly Deadpool, isn't there? I, I thought no. there was. Okay. The best you've got for an ongoing Deadpool series that is kid friendly in comic books. There is there are some TV shows where he'll show up and it's not too bad. Uh, but there is a PG thirteen rated Spider Man Deadpool crossover, mm. and that is it for Deadpool centric comics that are appropriate for children. Okay. That's okay. it. All right. And no. it's still very PG-13. <laughs> they pushed that PG-13. Mm. Uh, <laughs> this just says, Alex, you don't have to have a section of just green skinned women, do you? He's a big She-Hulk and all those. Any, any right. with green skin. Organized specifically by green skinned women? No, that would be very specific. But do I have green skinned women? Yes. Well, that sounds weird. It sounds like I have a pit in the back of my store where there's just like an alien women like pile. If you tell Alex I want these copies of Green Skin Woman books, she can pull them and have them ready when you show up. Ooh, I very frequently go. have people come in and they're like, I would like these obscure concepts in a comic book. And I'm like, wonderful. Patunk. Here you wow. Go. You're super talented. Um, Jeez. The best, the best, well, it's, I mean, I really like third party books more than I like a lot of Marvel and DC and most of like the interesting, like the weirder concepts or the stuff that you're like, there's no way a comic book would have these things are all third party. Do you want to read a lesbian love story about two old women reconnecting over bingo and reigniting their love from when they were like preteens? Uh, that's a comic book. It's called Bingo Love and it's charming. <laughs> Bingo love. Nice. It's that very awesome. charming. And it is. Oh, a there real she book. is. She she called it. Yeah. Oh, bingo yeah. Love. <laughs> uh by the way, Mark says an hour wrestling with old people will take what more way more than an hour. <laughs> uh this one they had to escort a boy band of Yon T uh to their next gig. It ended up being a young dating boy. game with snake boys. Yeah, it ended up being Doki Doki uh date the snake boys. <laughs> okay. At least it was a pigeon, God, so that's all right. Audio. Interesting yeah, was... that when I uh, we did the Princess Bride one, there was also snake. There were snake cultists at the Dragon Con. Yeah, it, it's always. I don't know what it is. If it's me or if it's like I don't know what it is. But clearly, snakes. I attract snake boys. I remember that at Dragon Con, there was one specific audience member who kept bringing snakes into everything. I do remember that. That was wild. <laughs> Well, 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 the main thing was the enemy were the snake cultists. So that was the main thing at the beginning. So we kind of had to... Uh, had to buy into the it. snakes. People had to ran with that, basically. Yes. It's true. Well, some, some, some interesting uh, gentleman also asked me to do a really hard voice. I don't wonder who that was at Dragon Con. Oh, it was John. I, uh, I wanted you to do Cobra Commander. Not, I know. Actually, I did... cult leader. That actually is... I love Cobra Commander. That's a... Oh, man, that's a tough voice to do. It is a tough voice to do, yeah. and I didn't know you were doing 16 more panels that would oh, yeah, That's what um, Mike said. That's right. Mike, Mike chimed Mike in Mike was like, that. Jeff, don't do that voice. <laughs> you have so many more things you're doing this weekend. You'll have no voice left. <laughs> um, all right. Let's see here. All right. There you go, folks. So Alpha Comics and Games, Richmond, Virginia, and Quid Pro Roll podcast. There's the link bit.ly slash Quid Pro Roll. Or your favorite podcasting platform, like Pandora. 
All right, here we go. Let's go. Oh, hey, we're going to do some more games and chat in a minute, folks. But it's time to thank our wonderful Patreons who support us every month. Thank you guys so much. No matter what amount you pledge, it's very helpful for us to do our show. Uh, you can you can help us become professional, like not professional dungeon masters necessarily, but professional geeks, I guess, Francis, I don't know. Entertainers, perhaps? Entertainers, professional. You, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> So that, 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 that I, 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 there's no label. <laughs> uh, anyway, patreoncom slash up is where you can go uh, and pledge any amount. If you, uh, there must be something funny. It's in the chat. me, Mario. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was looking at that like I don't know how we're gonna do that, but good Wait, luck, man. Uh, page, I'm not even looking at the chat yet. Hang on a second. <laughs> patreoncom slash up uh, Any amount, if you pledge at three dollars or more per month, you get access to our after-hour show, which we do after every show. Oh. <laughs> I guess I did it the other way around, though, because I did it Mario with Cobra Command. It should have been, um, uh, 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 <laughs> Mamma Mia Destro. Uh, I can't even do it. I'm trying to do it. I believe Let me, you, yeah. Francis. I see you winding up. I don't think I can. I, I, I can't do Mario, though. You know I, who can? Yeah. <laughs> it's a me, a Mario. Yeah. I can't Jeff do a good a, Mario. I can very... do a good Luigi. Okay. Is Welcome Luigi, is Cobra Commander Luigi sufficient? <laughs> Luigi. Mario. What? Is, that Luigi? is that Luigi's voice? I don't know what Luigi I'm sounds Mario. like. Mario. <laughs> I'm so sorry, oh, Mario. No. Oh, oh, Destro. If you could only get my brother. He's really <laughs> mean to me. <laughs> ah, G.I. Joe, you've found my plans <laughs> again. <laughs> I don't think Mario and Luigi sound exactly. You sound more like <laughs> Chef Boyardee than you sound yeah. like Mario. Dude. Uh, I don't sound like Mario at all. I do. Uh, wait, well, I have it. I have to do my terrible Italian accent every show because Martha, for some reason, thinks it's the most amazing thing ever. Oh, yeah, and sure. I said, if I do it every show, her and Francis have to come to Dragon Con. That's the deal we made. Yeah. So I so, do it <laughs> once every show. I almost oh, forgot yeah, to do it. I'm glad she said, Tammy said something. Yeah, I know, right? There you go. Yeah. Uh, sure, all right. Anyway, a give it. Let's. Sorry, what was that, Josh? A G.I. Joe is a breaking through. Oh, yeah, it's very nice. <laughs> I just don't... It's weird because you're trembling whenever you do this voice. Like, you're channeling you, Luigi's Mansion while you're doing the voice. You gotta do the tremble to do the voice right. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's a trembly voice. Oh, Mario. Oh, ghost. All right. Um, so super geeky thank you to the super shout-out patrons at $10 or more. You just, you do the whole thing this way. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's the thing. I'll do one as Luigi. You do one as Mario. <laughs> okay, great. Okay. <laughs> but but we're both we're both Cobra Commander. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Marie and Justin the Ron from KLI Brand. Let's go get those jaws. Uh, and a special thank you to Craig Allen Poole, uh, Destro, stop fucking the Baroness and get over here. Rachel J. <laughs> uh, speaking of Baroness, I, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I, I realize I don't want to go there, so never All mind. right, fine. Thank you, Rachel J. <laughs> You're the best. <laughs> I don't even know where was that was going. Uh, oh, Mamma Mia, thank you to Victor Snyder. Uh, remember, knowing is half the battle. Tammy Anderson, this is all your fault. Oh, that's good. That is, that is what he says a lot. <laughs> it's all your fault. He was there for those damn shows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, my and God. The Wait, did you just do Tammy, right? Okay, you yeah, did Tammy, did right? All right. I did. Uh, and and I did. thank you to John and Pappas. You're right. Uh, if it wasn't for those meddling Joes, I would have gotten to the way with it. Damn, you took my line. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, um... Okay, uh, Terry Field, um, uh, I'm so scared, uh, uh, uh of stuff. <laughs> <'Cause I'm... laughs> oh, you're scared of the stuff, the yogurt, I the, the earth of yogurt. I don't like it, the yogurt, it tasted too good. <laughs> All right, and of course, uh, we have the awesome Azendria, and, uh, uh, no, that's the Panther. I hated that guy. Jalu. Why is Cobra Commander so hateful of the of the Serpentor? He's so nice and so scaly. He's so pretty. 
Uh, and thank you to Sethos. He is not the pretty. He is a, he is a prettier though than the Sergeant Slaughter. I hate that guy too. All right. Fuck you, Sergeant Slaughter. <laughs> All right, there you go, folks. Uh, we'll never do that again in that voice. Uh, <laughs> I was about to be like, are y'all okay? <laughs> I'm okay. Uh, yeah, I think we're all right. Stuff is very scary. You never know. No, we do know what it is. It's yogurt. It's, it's alien, the, but from it's the earth. Alien yogurt. Yogurt. It's er, er, yogurt from the earth. And it tastes very good. All uh, right, uh, Francis, I just got a special reface from Ooh, Tammy. Oh. You want to tell Alex and Josh and everybody what that is? In case all right, well, this? reface is an app on your phone where you can take someone's face off and put it onto television shows, movies, you name it. You can be um, anyone you want. Hell, you can be Patrick Swayze. Yeah, guess who you are, Francis, in this one. Oh, God. I don't know. You're Alexander. Oh, I'm Alexander. Oh, yay. I'm not sure what the question mark's for, because I don't know what the, the thing of this clip is, but there you go. It's hard to tell, but your face actually mailed really well. Alexander. Yeah. Mm -mm. This is tell. distressing to look at. Oh, you should see us. Oh, my God. Girls. You haven't seen ones that are really distressing. <laughs> we've been the Spice Girls. We've been uh, Charlie's Angels. We've been. <laughs> what else All have right. we been? Cre Cream Pie Lars. I don't know. I didn't even, I'm sorry. If you had a question, feel free to ask it again. I did not see it. Um, let's see here. Oh, Spice Girls. Yes, we did, right? Oh, okay. Well, speaking of that, hang on. <laughs> You Here's one of, here, okay. This is just a one she sent me last week. Let me just share one more because I have it handy okay. here. Uh, whoops. Uh, let me bring this on the screen. Boom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 yes. I'm, I'm, I'm Carmen Electra in this one, right? <laughs> yes, you're, you're Carmen Electra. Oh, yeah. I My. hate how well that like fits. It's amazing, you'd, you'd right? Surprised. Like, you'd be surprised. Yeah, that's okay, wait. Well I got I to gotta get it in the act here. Okay, yeah, show one that looks. Speaking of speaking of Baywatch, yeah, yeah. <laughs> look at that Hasselhoff hair. Yeah, oh, yeah. Don't Ooh, look at my hair. running. I'm so good at running. Can you chest. make gifts Tinder profile pics? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good question. No, no, good question. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't, they need to. They need to be able to. All right. So anyway, uh, folks, there's some thank you, Tammy, of course, always for those awesome refaces. Yeah, thank you so much, Tammy. Uh, hey, since Marx is in the chat, uh, folks, let me, we'll uh, mention one more time here. Well, not the last time. Don't worry. That Hey, Francis, what do we have coming out? Well, we have an anthology of short stories about dragons, but not just any typical dragons, dragons of a different tale. And uh, both uh, Jeff and I contributed a story, a piece uh, to this anthology this book that's coming out the end of november actually it's november coming 29th out. yeah it's coming out cyber spider monday <laughs> cyber uh, spider yeah because that's when you can buy the new spider-man tickets oh my god that's not what they're calling it they're calling it cyber spider monday oh, i'm yeah, not i'm not gonna call it that but all right <laughs> that's kind of <laughs> catchy though it's kind of catchy but yeah you know it's about it's uh, uh it's us doing 15 other uh authors in a lovely beautiful book cover right there uh, yes. I, what, was, what was the name of your your story? Because I guess the titles of our stories are out. So they are. My story is Wailing and the Water Dragon. Yeah, uh, kind of based mine on is a friend called ancient home. Chinese. Yeah, ancient what Chinese. What's yours called? A friend called home. A friend called home. There you go. I don't know what sci-fi, right? Sci-fi sci -fi story? story. It is a sci-fi story. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, folks, lots of lots of cool stories coming out. Uh, thank you, to, of course, to Mark for having us part of it, and all the yeah. him and all the other awesome editors. And uh, we'll have a pre-order link soon i have it right here for you oh there you go books three dot com slash dragon's tale that's where you can go to pre-order it at your favorite yeah. retailer uh, i will say the amazon pre-orders are not quite up yet so they will it will yeah, be on yeah, amazon don't worry before it releases but that's not quite up yet but a lot of bars and noble apple a lot of other places kobo are up uh and the paper there will be paperback as it get before the release as well yeah. just so you know folks yeah. if you'd like it get into your grubby hands instead of uh on your like the smell of paper I and actually, I, I love the smell of paper, man. I love paperback books. Mm -hmm. or, yeah, paper books. I've got some author friends, and they always say pre-orders are a huge, huge part of the success of a book as far as publishers are concerned. Mm -hmm. So if you want to see more books that have Jeff and Francis in them, pre-order this book. Oh, Ooh. thanks, man. Wow, you guys both should be my spokespeople. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are the progressed. You're awesome. Yeah, what, 
what's your rates? <laughs> <laughs> They're professional yeah, promoters now. They're uh, professional hype people right here. It's lovely. I love it. Yeah. But yeah, there you go. Yes, <laughs> folks, please please do go to the link. We would love it if you check it out. Um, mm -hmm. And there's, uh, like I said, tons of great stories in here uh, besides just Francis and my stories. And Mark's, obviously. Mark's and his and Mark's Julie have, a, have a, I believe, a West, a Wild West themed dragon story, I believe. Ooh. Which is going to be cool. I can't wait to read that. Uh, thank you for the awesome story. Oh, well, no problem, Mark. Thank you for letting us be part of it. Yeah. Uh, all right. All right. Oh, and Scorpio. Oh, wait. Listen, may also said, Alex just had the look of being stunned and wanting to barf seeing Francis in the Baywatch. Look, look. I was clearly just overcome with the beauty. All right. Yes. I was just, I was very clearly just kind of momentarily stunned. Like it was a 90s movie. It is. And that gif was like the popular girl. And I have the letter <laughs> folded up in my pocket with all my feelings. And so everything's in slow mo yeah. for a little well, bit. Yeah. She, Francis, she said, You were stunning. You look stunning in it. I'm telling you, I'm effervescent for a reason. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so uh, since you mentioned Tinder, I for, actually forgot. Scorpio, you're right. We used to do a geek, geeky Tinder game. I, we haven't done that in a long time. I've never um, done a geeky Tinder game. I'd love to. What do is geeky Tinder? Because that sounds delightful. Uh, yeah. I believe what we did was. We would uh, pick, we would have a, like, people would throw out fictional characters and we would say like, would you swipe left or right on this character? I think is how we did it. Is that how Tinder works? That, I've never used Tinder. <laughs> is that I forget? Billionaire Banshee vibes. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> Billy, it's a, it's a game that conveniently you can buy at Alpha Comics and Games. Um, that... Billy meets Banshee? Uh, no, Billionaire Banshee. Oh, Billionaire, billionaire Banshee. Banshee. You get like a perk and a quirk of, um, like one of the things is like you know poops gold bars but like the um quirk is like the drawback so it's going to be things like uh requires requires you to step barefoot on cockroaches um at oh, least gross. once a day to be sexually fulfilled and uh <laughs> the way that we run it when we're playing it is you pick a person and then all of you pick picks or perks or quirks and you have to sell yourself dating show wise to that person oh um, that's i like have fun. an almost unbroken winning streak at this game oh, <laughs> wow nice One well of my favorite I guess to... is must wear bread bowl shoes <laughs> what yeah must wear Wait. bread bowls but as shoes is that the perk or the quirk <laughs> that's, the, that's quirk. the quirk i hope it's the quirk why would that be the quirk <laughs> I mean, the, the person the soft... that you're dating just loves Panera Bread. <laughs> yeah, it, Panera. Well, actually, I go to Panera a lot, so I'm. Yeah, that might. I might hey, like that. You're not, you're not gonna get a softer shoe than bread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I probably sourdough. If it's mostly most of the bread bowls are sourdough, which probably yeah. isn't the softest. No, no, not after a while. <laughs> uh by the way mark says his or his and his wife's story julie is a wild beast of the west wild west meets dragons nice I like yeah. it. uh alex it's like you're a salesperson or something <laughs> <laughs> by the way hello bridget uh i'm not sure what sounds right but hopefully the show sounds right to you so that's good that's good yeah hopefully <laughs> they figured uh, it out take them out <laughs> Uh, all right, hey, wait, we just two two more uh, refaces, but one of them is going to tie into our question we're about to talk about, so this is perfect. So thank you, Tammy. If I can click the right button here, that would be fantastic. Uh, here we go. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so I'm I'm uh, Biff Fortuna, right? Mm -hmm. Who? <laughs> well, that's who an is... actual that's an actual uh, Family Guy character. That's a Family playing. Guy. Yeah. Yeah, but my You're face just... is on that, right? Yeah. You're in Bifford tonight, yeah. Yeah, all right. That's funny. All right, hang on. I got nice. one more for you. And then, all right, uh, all right here we go. Oh, wait. Is, I'm this, gonna is do... this the to, to the wash off the stench of Carmel Electra and Ermia's Carmel Electra? Uh, well, here we go. Here, Oh, look at this. I'm Mad Mardigan ah! from Willow. Look at you. And here's one more thing from Willow. Oh God, I'm Willow. So this, this is me, you, and Martha. Uh, she says. Tammy oh says. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, let me pause this so it stops from flickering. Oh, oh cool. Man, I'm I, get that, I get that printed, blown up as a poster, and framed in my office. Where I you? <laughs> That's actually really well you done. That actually looks great. You should. Yeah. I actually have a Willow poster up here, but it's not this poster. I need to get this poster. I mean, I need More to get Willow the real posters. I need to get the real poster. Yeah, oh, dude. I, I love Willow so much. It's one of my favorite movies. Um, 
That actually looks so great, right? It does really good, yeah. We got to have that at FrapCon. We got to print this out. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Tammy. That's great. We love Thank it. Thank you, Tammy. You're, you're so good at that stuff. You are. Anyway, <laughs> all right. So speaking, uh, speaking of Willow, which is one of my all-time favorite movies, as you well know, folks, if you've watched this show more than once. Uh, so uh, Disney Plus Day was, I don't know, a few days ago, right? Earlier this week? Yes, it was. Uh, it was. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I thought you were going to tell me the date. No, I mean, I don't. I, like they, they, <laughs> they gave us a lot of they gave us a lot of fun stuff to look forward to. Yeah, a lot of stuff. I didn't haven't seen all of it, but I saw some of it. One of the things was a, a behind the scenes of there's a Willow series. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you don't know Willow, folks, it's a 1988 Ron Howard directed movie from a story of George Lucas. Uh, just a wonderfully, at least for me anyway, I was the right age at the time. Enchanting <laughs> fantasy movie. Um, it has a comic book. Oh, there Willow does. Willow does. Yeah, they did a I know Willow has book. novels. I've read some of the novels. It has they comic did book a tie in comic book around when the movie come, came out because that oh. was very common for anything George Lucas had his hand in. Oh, cool. I did not know that. Does it take They're place be... like during it or after it? Or you don't know? I'm not sure. It, it's if I'm remembering correctly, because I only it's it's an older book. So I've only read like one issue of it. And it was like issue like two. Um, yeah. But it's it's a translation of the film as a comic. Oh, that's great. Oh, okay. That's very cool. They did that a lot, especially in the 80s. Uh, Anyway, there is going to be a Willow series and uh, Warwick Davis, who played Willow, and I love him. He the Disney Plus, they had this almost like a mockumentary style thing. It was him like introducing the rest of the cast of the new Willow show, but kind of poking fun at them and and being kind of funny about it. Uh, I don't know if you saw it, Francis, but I thought it was pretty funny. Um, and it I, was, didn't, uh, I didn't see it. Yeah, it looks like it, it's a cool cast. Um, looks cool. And um, I don't know what any of these characters are really, except for I look up some of their names on IMDb, but uh, we'll have to see what they do. Um, interesting. I, 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 I was hoping they would have a Laura Dannon as an adult. That is nowhere to be seen so far, but who knows? Mm-hmm. We'll see. That was, that's the baby in Willow. Um, Fun, weird uh, story about Willow for me. Uh, My dad played basketball one time with the actor who played the village elder. (laughs) Really? Um, Oh, uh, yes. I can't think of his name right now, but yeah. Uh, He he has since passed, um, but my dad worked in media for a really long time. And he was like, yeah, I played basketball with that guy once. And I was like, that's awesome. (laughs) Okay. Did you win? Like... (laughs) That's a great story. I love it. I was a huge, I, I was a huge Willow. Basically, anything that's a fantasy movie, I mm. passionately love. With my favorite movie of all time is Stardust. So, like, oh, Willow, I love Stardust. What a Willow movie. very much like fits into my. Oh, does it have the things I like? I will enjoy this film. Nice, thank you. Good. I'm glad to see some more Such Willow a good love movie. here. Anyway, but anyway, the question is not just about Willow, folks. It leads me to. Since they are reviving Willow on Disney Plus as a series, uh, is there any other movie or series you think Disney Plus should revive? So you can tell us your answers in the chat or post them on the comments if you're watching in post. Francis, what do you think? The never ending story, and it should literally never end. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Again, that's from my childhood. Oh my God, I beloved, I love that movie so much. Mm-hmm. Another great fantasy movie. They did, well, they did a sequel, right? Back, they did. I think. Yeah. Just two two movies, though, right? It was only the two movies, which then um, means that it's a lie. Would you? <laughs> would you? Would you want the same character uh, characters no, as adults? Would you want just totally new characters or a continuation? I mean, because it's a world. It's a world within itself, right? Like it's it's yeah. already right. It doesn't have to world. have the same characters, so we could it can definitely go on. Would you want to see like s- some new people from our world go into the? That world? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I want the same premise, right? Or the, the finding the book and all that stuff. I want kind of that same premise, but, you know, updated, better, you know. Maybe maybe the horse doesn't have to die this time. <laughs> mm, you know. Atreus, right? Atreus, yeah. I always, I always mix it up between the boy and the Fal- horse. Falco or Falcor. Yeah. Falcor, the, the, the dragon. But yeah, oh, no, Fal- you, the Falcor boy. could be the, boy. the... Yeah, we, we, I, I, what's the boy's name? Isn't the boy you know, Isn't it Or is the boy named Atreyu? This is what we always mess That's up. That's what we always miss. We always mess, we always mess up the boy and the horse. Yeah. I think the boy's name is Atreyu and the horse's name is Ajax. Is that right? Okay. No, it's Tamiel, Ajax. Tamiel, Tamiel, yeah. Not Ajax. Someone's going to yeah. tell us for sure. She knows. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. that's a great choice, man. Never any story. I'm actually, was, I'm not surprised. Yeah, that would be great. 
Yeah, it would be fantastic. I think it'd be great. Uh, so I totally agree with Brianna here. I was gonna say you... gummy bears. I love the gummy bears so much as a kid. The best cartoon theme song ever, in my opinion. Um, bring on some gummy bears, man. Great choice, Bree. Uh, I just Bree is very intelligent. Once again, I will say that once again. Uh, <laughs> it's a Disney-owned property. I'm a little surprised they don't have like a Disney ride, like Disneyland thing. Atreyu and Artax. Artax. I was so close. You're close. You're close. You're surprised? That, oh, they don't have a gummy bears ride? Is that what yeah, you said? Yeah, or something like that. Yeah. But you know what? They don't do any rides off the, like after Ducktales or any of those cartoons like gummy bears. Yeah, you know? but I mean, you're right. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Okay, let's just make wants a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy series because like, apparently Disney owns the rights to that. I think they do actually. I think they were the one who yeah. put out the um, the latest one. The one two thousand five. Uh, speaking of those cartoons, Jaloon would like to see some of those back: Tailspin, Rescue Rangers, Darkwing Duck, etc. Uh, they did bring DuckTales back recently, of course. Well, they hit, they they hinted Holy shit. at it. How many times do I have to block this person? Sorry. I know. Well, no, changed. this this one is naked, naked HD online strips without clothing, which I don't know how they strip when they do not have clothing to remove. <laughs> it's just amazing. That they just take their amazing. skin off, just like they they peel they, their hair. They're getting they're removing their hair. <laughs> they're like a boo hag. They just take their skin off. Is that what a boo hag? That's what a boo hag is. Oh, a boo hag, it's a kind of uh, cryptid, uh, and they put their hand on like a spinning reel and they spin. Uh, oh, their skin that's okay. Off, that's all you they... know about that. Thank you. <laughs> but nobody <laughs> else read scary stories, like scary stories to tell in the dark as a kid, just me. I did, but I don't remember much of them, actually. I remember the books still were enough for me, like, I'm okay. <laughs> so much of my personality is based off those books. Uh, Jalou says, I hear Disney's bringing back the Navigator. Wonder if the voice of the ship, same actress Pee Wee Herman, will come back. No, but Paul Rubens was the yeah, Paul Rubens was the voice of the ship in, in Flight of the Navigator. Um, but yeah, they, they're gonna do a Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers movie. And when they showed the script in the background, very keenly, they put a Darkwing Duck script in the background. <laughs> nice, so. That's Francis' okay. favorite. Uh, I love that the Darkwing Duck is well because Darkwing Duck is amazing. He is. and it yeah. still holds up it does. pretty well. Yeah, Let's I mean, get dangerous. <laughs> it's got very millennial humor. Like looking back on it, a lot of millennial humor can be sort of traced back in its primordial form to how Darkwing Duck set up its jokes. Oh yeah, for sure. Mm, interesting. Hello, Pierre. Thank you for joining us. Welcome. Oh. Glad you're here. Uh, we're talking about what shows or movies or series you would like Disney Plus to revive, like they're reviving Willow. Um, oh, okay, so sorry, Pierre just joined us. So let me get this question because he didn't see it when you guys were talking about Quid Pro Role earlier. Were you guys fans of Critical Role? Like, did that influence you at all? He wants to know about your own show. I actually actively, so I think that Matt Mercer is awesome. I actively try to avoid uh, listening to a lot of other podcasts that I think have any kind of similar flavor to my own. And it, it's not for any reason other than I actually have uh, pretty bad memory problems due to ADHD. And I will forget like where I heard something, but I'll remember a concept. Yeah. And it is very easy for me to think of something that I've heard somewhere and forget that it was not me that had that idea. And because Matt Mercer has a very similar narrative style to mine, I'm very careful about what I can consume from Critical Role because I'm so scared I'm going to take something without remembering that it was his and integrate it and then be like, oh no, I'm a fraud. Sure, no, that, that makes total sense. I'll, uh, I'll bring the heat they were looking for. I've listened to three episodes of season one and one episode of season two. And I can't. I can't. Oh wow! I cannot. Oh wow! I respect the hell out of anybody that can. Mm -hmm. I cannot. Okay. Okay. He complained about the eating on the mic. That was a big thing for him. Eat on the mic. <laughs> Talking over each other, telling each other what they should be doing. Wow! I, I, I don't know. I don't watch it. But... <laughs> oh, you know, I've actually never listened to it, so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just know it's super. Yeah, it was like really popular. Um. So, all right. Well, thank you for sharing the way. I appreciate that honest opinion there. Uh, usually I'm the one who has opinions no one agrees with. So that's good. <laughs> I'm sure other people agree with that, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You can tweet me your angry tweets at the Black Cloak DM on Twitter. The Black Cloak, the Black DM? Cloak DM? That's a good name. Yeah. Nice. He has uh, a 
cloak that he wears to all of Should his I get public. It? No, please don't. Yes, yes, you please, should. No, please don't. Okay. No. Right. Yes, yes, you're outvoted. Oh, I love that the oh, and the and the headphones are wireless, so he just like ran off. I'm like, <laughs> you're amazing. You just run. I was gonna, <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh no, he's gonna run with the what? He's gonna take the headphones off. No, um, I regret buying him this cloak every day. <laughs> he wears it to every game he DMs, be it at a convention, be it at a brewery, be it at his house. He uh, ran a game for my parents once, and I was like, please, just don't wear the cloak. He tells my parents that I didn't let him wear the cloak. So what they did, my parents, was go to the living room and grab blankets, which they draped over themselves like cloaks, <laughs> so that he could wear his cloak, and the only one that was the odd man out was me. Wow. I have a lot oh. of... Uh oh, here it comes. Oh, oh, the, my God. oh that's an awesome oh, cloak. Yes. And love the clasp. Damn, that's great. Is that a is that a is that a Lord of the Rings type cloak? Uh it it is a style. It's not it's not a replica. Uh oh. there is a place at the Maryland Ren Fair where they have some choice pieces. Uh this is entirely canvas. Uh do not stand into the rain with it. It weighs about 30 to 40 pounds if you let it get soaked. <laughs> Okay. We'll keep you mostly dry, though. <laughs> By the way, mostly. we have lots of chants going. Cloak, 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 cloak. <laughs> By the way, hello, Caitlin. Caitlin, thank you for watching. Appreciate it. Uh, welcome. Uh, you can. Uh, we're, we're talking about. Uh, well, we're talking about cloaks, of course, and we're also talking about what movie or series you would like Disney Plus to revive. Or what about you guys, Alex? Uh, so there are a lot of series that I want to get revived. Uh, a lot of them have either been touched on with like Darkwing Duck. Or they're series that there is no way that Disney would be able to do anything about, like Legend of the Seeker. Um, but a thing that yeah, they, oh, Francis and I talk about all that all the time. It was we want ended. That. So, mm, regardless, it's all right. It's regardless. right. It was great. It was great when it was on. Um, and until the last three episodes. Um, but uh, a thing that I think they could get their hands on as a property that I think they could revive, and we were talking about this before the stream is the sky dancers cartoon oh and they'll get they should get real guy fieri and they need to get guy fieri to voice cyclone live action and he should be his sky clone they need to get him to, to, to voice sky clone because and no one only francis kind of agrees with me that i think he looks like guy fieri with no hair green skin and a weird outfit like i i'm just saying I'm just saying. It's, it's, what is it? Sky clone? Sky clone. Uh, he wears a Beetlejuice burlesque onesie. Yeah. He is yeah. entirely green except for the very purple eyeshadow. He has a red uh, Wait, duster. You're, say you're saying, and he has like, he had like almost like a bullseye on his chest. Yes. 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 The, uh, the, hypno and if, the hypnotic. The hypnotic, the yeah. hypnotic thing. Yes. Uh, okay, well, like I'm glad Francis thinks so. Like I don't, I don't, this doesn't look like Guy Fury at all. Ugh. Fine. <laughs> Y'all are monsters for not agreeing. No, Francis agrees with you. Or maybe he was just being nice. I don't know. Uh, Scott, so remember how I said I like terrible things more than I like good things? Sky Dancers was hot, toasty garbage. Um, and if they could make it again and have it be that same level of hot, toasty 90s garbage, I would be able to ascend to a different plane of existence because joy would have filled my heart to the point that it exploded. Would have been wow. Great. Wow. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, I just, okay. I want, I want Darkwing Duck because it would be good. You know, there's a bunch of series that I'd really love because they'd be good. I want Sky Dancers because it would be awful. <sighs> <laughs> All right. Uh, in the chat, we've got Hook uh, from Tammy Rufio. She wants that to come back. Sure. Pierre wants a very, I guess, a revival already of WandaVision, even though he's just on. It was a very quick oh, revival. Um, but like Tammy also says, she has a whole tote full of capes and cloaks. If Alex needs one, one is even a short one based on Cinderella and Blue and Pink. There you go. Oh, wow. I actually have a gray cloak because I will sometimes cosplay uh characters from quid pro role and alita wears a gray cloak with her main costume so nice um it's exactly the same kind of cloak in a different color 
because that's how I knew this one would be nice because I already owned one. Ah, all right. Uh, yeah. uh, Bree says cloaks are always in fashion. And also, yes, I saw the cat was having fun with the poster again. Hey, look. <laughs> She's being a loaf? Oh. She being, oh, she being, she cleaning her beans. All of our cats are named after Chrono Trigger characters. So. Oh my God, Chrono Trigger! I love that game. It is my. I was wondering. Video I game. wasn't going to say anything because I know the other one's Marl. So I'm like, oh, I know that name. <laughs> yeah. Um, we very recently, uh, not terribly long ago, lost our other cat, whose name was oh, Scala. Oh wow! So, so there's Scala, there's Marl, and now there's Isla. Nice. That's great. We're trying to figure out when we name a cat Robo and Bro, Frog. I was going to say. <laughs> I just saw the other day, uh, Chrono Trigger is on actually like, uh, you can play it on your phone now. Yes, yeah. you can play it on your phone, you can play it on the DS. The problem with the DS translation of it is they actually retranslated it and changed some of the dialogue and stuff. And Why? as somebody who has played Chrono Trigger well over 40 times, mm. um, I when it goes like Chrono Chrono, wake up Chrono, instead it goes Chrono Chrono, wake up sleepyhead, I'm immediately like, that's not correct. Wait, are you still hungry after you go into a sleeping pod? <laughs> uh, yes, you are still hungry after okay, you go good. into the Enertron. Uh, yeah. But they do add some things at the end of the game to kind of tie it into Chrono Cross, which is very underrated. Um, wow. But yeah, sorry, you guys you guys sort of activated my trap card when you mentioned Chrono Trigger. No, it's fine. I oh, mean, Chrono great. Cross, again, game. it's another, yeah. It's Especially an underrated game. It's not uh, as good as Chrono Trigger, but it is underrated. So Josh, what uh, I don't know, what series or movie would you like to see brought back? Uh, some folks probably saw me looking at my phone because sometimes I forget which studio made a movie. Oh, but... that's fine. I don't. Yeah, <laughs> we don't all remember. Yeah, uh, the Rescuers. Oh. Oh yeah 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 yeah. yeah. I would now... love more Rescuers films. Not now... necessarily like the same team. Like it could be their kids or their grandkids. Modernize it a little bit. Are they, did they awesome. go down under? They did, in fact, go down under. The little okay. mouse takes a selfie with the still image of the topless lady in the window. That's right, the topless lady in the window. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Disney. Uh, you got away with so much back in the day. Can't, yeah, I know they can't do it anymore. They really can't. <laughs> uh here we go tammy said one last i'm gonna share one last one tammy the other ones i'll share next week uh but I, these are all great but i want to have some but let me share this one because it was a it had to do with what we were just talking about here's one more uh reface oh god oh it's flavor town <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there you go francis i just wasn't expecting francis to come toward my face with that I know. Level of ferocity it's very it's very, very, if this was very in 3D, aggressive i'd actually jump back like Oh, I've only ever been to one of his one place that was featured on that show, and it was Ho Dad's in San Diego. Well, not not, not the oh. one from. Were you the, at the in, one? Did we go together? No, I, this was years ago. Um, oh. Which Ho Dad's you go to? Ho Dad's is the best burger in San Diego. Ho Dad, the, the I guess the one he actually went to. Where he? <laughs> How does that help me? I don't know. I, which I, don't, one I, went to. I think it's an Oceanside. I think. Ocean, okay, you went yeah. to there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's the Ocean one. Side one. Yeah. Uh, um, or Ocean Beach. You went to the Ocean, Ocean Beach. Beach. Sorry. Ocean, Ocean Beach. Beach. Sorry, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Bridget said the rescue down under was the best. Mm -hmm. There you go. Um, nice. And... Go into that mine, child. I know that that was that the first one or the second one. Like that was the plots for the rescuers were wild, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember them actually. It's been a while. It was like. Oh, oh man! Oh, was it My, like it was? It Oliver? was part. Oh, sorry, gone. No, Oliver and Company and the Rescuers and um, so uh, Basil of Baker name. Street were oh. all considered, I think, part of the Disney Dark Age, uh, which drives me crazy because some of them were really stellar. Oliver and Company was delightful. All right, like I, I will them, fight man. somebody over Oliver and Company, but like, oh, I just quoted the first one according to Bridget. And and oh, Brianna, who oh, both thanks, corrected me at the same time. Um, <laughs> wow! Right, nice job, Brian. Everybody, everybody coming for me. Um, but like, it was just when they, when they got to write their own, and it wasn't just like a, a transformation of a fairy tale or existing book. It was 
it was interesting. I think The Rescuers actually was based off of a book, though, if I'm remembering correctly. Is it is this is this a series? Those are not Joanna's eggs. Or is this a quote? This is a quote. I think this is a quote from one of the movies. The Rescuers. Rescuers. I know. <laughs> I well, know. Joanna in that series is like a lizard creature always skulking around. Uh, all right. Like I don't know enough about this. Though, yeah. I know. It's like, I don't know. <laughs> hey, Bridget, um, you're gonna, don't worry about your grammar. That's totally fine in the show. Oh, yeah. What I'm hearing is we're going to be doing a super geeked up special Patreon exclusive where we get to watch the rescuers and all of these movies that you guys have no <laughs> idea about. Well, we do do that sometimes. We do. We have watched things that we haven't seen before and do a live stream like as we talk to our fans about it. Yeah. yeah I saw Sky Ooh, High for the first time. In the one of these, you did. You know? Sky High cool. is amazing. And I yes, I introduced, I made him watch Sky High. Uh, also, though, I am angry because um, I think War and Peace should have gotten with the best friend character. Uh, and the fact that that didn't happen makes that movie oh. uh, infuriating mm. to me. Because they were setting up a whole love story. And then they're like, no, nah, the protagonist must have a kiss well, friend. Well, yeah, I get what you're saying. But that he, sh that, I don't know. I knew, I guess, he was, he was never going to get with him. But I, I could see that. I'm could just cool. saying it's more yeah. realistic. And All I right. would fight for this. Gee, wow. It's funny, like... Tammy does this. Everyone loves like all War and Peace. <laughs> uh, look, if you're looking between those two guys mm -hmm. and you are a guy leaning person attraction wise, you do not look between the two of them and pick literally anyone other than War and Peace. Well, there a, you go. His name's a pun. Beautiful. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Two, super cool power. Three, got that whole like bad boy but secretly squishy so i can change him vibe it's amazing well there you go <laughs> joanna the goanna kept stealing the bad guy's eggs oh is that what she was oh because he's a... all right fine you can have your worn piece it's fine uh <laughs> the main girl should have gotten with him they were setting it up it was very clear that they rewrote the script at the end <laughs> No, they didn't. No, I don't. Well, all right. We'll, we're going to debate this all night. <laughs> Let's just move on. <laughs> War, and, War and Peace is very attractive, Bree says. Or when it was when I was a teen. Um, hey, he's, he's still smoldering, I'm sure. <laughs> he has a very smoldering look. It's like, it's very the way he looks <laughs> all the time. Oh, I thought she was going to like throw your headphones down. I was like, God damn it. You have, must agree with the Warren piece is the best. No, uh, I need to, I need all the blood flow to go to my brain. If I need to fight for the honor of why sky high was clearly rewritten at the end. All right. Uh, let me see if I missed anything here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Bridget asks, have you all ever watched dimension 20 content? What are your thoughts? That sounds familiar. What is dimension 20? I've, I've watched a little bit of Dimension 20. That's Brendan Lee Mulligan's shows. And I really like his style as a DM. Oh, wow. I like it a lot. Oh, okay. So it's a, is it an actual play? Yes. Yeah, yeah. He does a series of shows frequently with guests. I haven't watched any of the series long enough to know any of the plot, but I've seen some of his guest work and I've been like, this man, Ooh, beautiful. There you go. Oh, chef's kiss. Nice. Um, by the way, folks, I know we have some new viewers here today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, hey, if you could hit that subscribe button, or what do we say, friends? Smash that subscribe button. Yeah, smash, the, smash the subscribe button. Twerk on that like button. <laughs> Twer I don't know if we say that. No. Twerk Ring the, the like bell. button. Ring the bell. Yeah. But uh, really, folks, that can help us out. Definitely, if you subscribe, give us a like. Uh, actually, everybody, please like the video, even if you're already subscribed to us. Uh, we would like love that. Like the video, even if you hate it. Yes. If you hate it, go dislike someone else's. Uh, <laughs> so uh, oh, there we go. Hey, Caitlin, thank you, Caitlin. You got the idea. I'm going to smash that subscribe button. That's the Ooh. spirit. Way to go. Uh, but we appreciate it, folks. Thank you so much for doing that. Because uh, we do this, um, even when Alex and Josh are not here, I know that seems weird. If they weren't here, it's not fun. But <laughs> even when they're not here, we still have geeky fun. Uh, we do this every week, Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. Uh, and we do some specials. Uh, we got to plan our next special fandom one, uh, Francis. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, Bridget has another cool question. Uh, if you could turn a cartoon show into a one-shot, which cartoon and why? So... Uh, I will answer this in a second, but the first thing that I need to say is the first time I ever played Call of Cthulhu, 
it was a person who turned the rescue rangers into a modern era call of not a modern era cold era a cold war era call of cthulhu game where we were fighting uh soviet spies i got to play gadget um and it was the first time i ever played that system ever um wow. so it was really interesting it was really wild and i only got to play two sessions before the game fell apart <laughs> Oh, okay, right. So she, yeah, she means as like a one shot RPG game, basically, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so one shot. What cartoon would I make into a one shot? I, I want to say Sky Dancers, just because that's the theme right now. For that's your go to. Yeah. Um, and I already uh, based a lot of my narrative style off Del Toro Quest, uh, which they made an anime out of, which I have opinions on. Um, but I'll go with GI Joe because that was my favorite cartoon as a kid. Um. I kind of almost want to say He-Man, but they're actually are they're making a Masters of the Universe um, game uh, that's coming out. I don't know, some supposedly sometime soon. Uh, that'd be fun. What about you, Francis? You know, it's funny because I see the cat, and all I can think of is Samurai Pizza Cats. Um, sure, hell <laughs> yeah. I mean, why not? Because they're you know you can get definitely get a good oh, one shot. Oh, like that. the turtle, the Teenage Tur Ninja Turtles. Is there yeah. a game on that? Uh, that'd be a cool one shot if there isn't a game already. Uh, Josh, what about you? Um, it's I mean, Adventure Time is cloak. basically D and D already. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, do you have a different answer? Isla, what are your thoughts? Gargoyles. Oh, oh yes, we love gargoyles yeah. in the show. Great answer. All right, cool. Uh, all right, great. So we have. Oh, by the way, real quick. So we we're speaking of anime a little bit earlier. A new show that just came out. It's a Adult Swim slash Crunchyroll production is uh, um, Blade Runner Black Lotus. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah there's Blade two Runner, but out. they only open expensive Magic the Gathering cards. <laughs> Wait, is that what Black, is Black Lotus have to do with Magic? A Black Lotus is the most expensive oh, card in Magic okay. the Gathering. Oh. It has nothing to do with that, but okay, that's good to know. I didn't know that. Um, it's a, they, they release weekly. There's two episodes out. Um, and um, yeah, it's, it's really good. Like... I love the animation, like the action is done amazingly well. Acting is really good. Uh, a Crunchyroll, you can only get the subtitle version. Uh, on Adult Swim, you'll get the dub version, just in case oh, you have a preference. Stop or dub. Um, yeah. Oh, Tammy has a, oh my God, Tammy knows me so well. Kim Possible, I would love to play a one shot of Kim Possible. I'd love that show. That'd be super fun. Great choice. And, oh, Bridget's a big fan of the gargoyles there. They're your choice, Josh. Uh, Bree says the Aristocats. Which is another, I guess it's also another Dark Age film, right? Um, also says, Gummy Bears. Gummy Bears is a one shot. Yeah, I want to bounce here and there and everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and drink my gummy berry juice. I don't know that Aristocats is Dark Age, but I do know that Aristocats doesn't age well. Oh, Ooh. no. Ah, a lot of very old Disney movies don't. I can't wait for the Lady and the Tramp one shot. Then anything animal? <laughs> that's based. just that's just. Ah, we eat the uh, spaghetti. <laughs> right, that's the one let's scene. roll for a spaghetti smooching. <laughs> roll for spaghetti smooch. <laughs> That's yeah. the whole mechanic of the game, so, is spaghetti smooching. So if I roll a twenty, I get the meatball. Is that what you're trying to tell me? <laughs> Yay. Um, roll, yeah, if you get a one, you get the, the I don't know, the, gar the stuff in the garbage can in the trash. Here's a um, some old garlic bread. Enjoy. Yeah. Uh, Robotech RPG, Jalou mentions. He hasn't had the chance to play it. Chess as Land of the Lost could be a cool one shot. Uh, Red Dwarf RPG. Uh, they love men mentioning Red Dwarf, right? Because we haven't seen it still. <laughs> uh, so Jalou, I'm going to be probably in the minority, I'm sure, but I actually refer dub to sub. I know most anime, a lot of anime fans do not. I mean, Alex is making a face at me again. Like I just said, War and Peace was terrible. Uh, <laughs> here's my quick thing. There, it's like for, for foreign film, I want subtitles, but they're cartoon characters. There is no original. There's not a voice that really, that, right? They're create, they're pretend. That's why I don't, that's why I guess I prefer dubbed. The problem I have is that some dub voice actors are clearly people who are like just starting their career as a voice actor. And I respect that you have to start somewhere. But a show that I really adore is not necessarily mm -hmm. it. See, well, most of the ones I've seen, I think the dub, the actors are great, though. Like, 
They do. There's a, really a lot of really good dubs. Yeah. Especially today. Yeah. yeah. Lisa Ortiz. Oh yeah. So right back in the day, maybe not as great, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, Rugrats as of like, oh, as in one shot, that would be interesting. That would be great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Time is Anna's daughter. Annika says Wolverine and the X-Men. They actually are is it, redoing. Is there an RPG? They're supposed to be continuing X-Men. As X-Men 97. Series. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're going to be cartoon Disney from the '90s. Yeah, Disney Plus is bringing it back. That'll be interesting. Can't, can't wait to hear Gambit's Cajun accent again. Oh, 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 oh rogue! Oh shit! <laughs> Which is not what he sounds like at oh. all. You can only uh, hope that they'll hire really, really inexpensive Canadian voice actors to do all that work. Eh? <laughs> oh, we just froze. I read. Supposedly, I just read yesterday. There's they're they're supposedly getting some of the original cast to do the voices. Are we back? Oh yeah! Oh, you did you go away? Yeah, we we never met. Yeah. We never lost you. Yeah, we just we popped out for a second. Oh, Uh-oh. well, you're good for us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hey, ZNN Zeta News Network. All right, greetings. Thank you for being here. There's all these people watching us for the first time. This is great. Thanks. Well, this is well, exciting, here, folks. Ah! The monsters. That's a one shot from Caitlin. Uh oh, Jalu's trying to knife hand me. Ha ha! Guess what, Jalu? Uh, since I'm taking Jiku Dono, I'm going to Poxow that knife hand and oh block God, you. That name I forgot about. It's called Poxow. That's yeah, right. he used to take it too, right? See? Yeah. Learn, yeah. learn all the uh, Cantonese. Poxow and Lopsow. And, yeah, yep. Yeah. All right. We won't, we won't bore people with that, though. We won't bore people with that. Although, <laughs> although Jiku Dono is great. I'm really enjoying it. I had it tonight, right before the show. Anyway, uh, Real Monsters as a one shot, Caitlin says. And uh, let's see here. Annika says The Amber Juice can voice any other show except the ones I like, agrees with John. <laughs> send the amateurs to the ones i don't like and then yeah that's nice um courage the cowardly dog would make a great rpg Ooh, oh, there are some oh. episodes of courage the cowardly dog in particular that i'd like oh this would make such a good spooky game cool all right i, I yeah i never watched that so all right nice. you never watched courage the cowardly I'm, I'm aware dog. of it but i don't i don't i don't think i actually watched it I, I will tell you, Jeff, of the things that I think you would at least find interesting, even if you didn't get into it, there are a couple of episodes of Courage the Cowardly Dog that I think you would at least be like, okay, I see why people like this so much. Sure. I, yeah, I, I would give it a try. She's like, even if you don't like War and Peace, you'll like Co- Courage the Cowardly Dog. <laughs> why not? I All mean, right. there are a couple episodes that like legit scared the crap oh, out of wow. me. All right. Bit. Sounds cool. Nice. Thanks for the recommendation. Yeah. Hey, yeah, you're you're, you're told me about money shots, so I'll, I'll, I'll also check out Courage, <laughs> Courage the Cowardly Dog. It is. It has maybe thirty percent less sex than Money Shot does. <laughs> All right. Oh, just thirty percent less. Okay. Just thirty well, percent. Still plenty of sex, much. though. Yeah. God. Oh yeah, there's a lot of sex still. Oh uh, boy, that's the best line of the night. <laughs> Blue says Courage is a great character, and then Caitlin says, Jeff, please watch Courage the Cowardly Dog. Definitely worth it. All right. So I got two from you and Caitlin and some other people there. So more I, like acronyms. I gotta do it. I gotta do it more now. acronyms, please. <laughs> See that, but that one I totally that figured out easy. Up. Not to lose like freaking fifteen letter acronyms, <laughs> which, we do, which we do on our. We have we made a game though, super acronyms sure. where we do that sometimes. So it's That's, fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, we should get to our final game here. Even though we're yeah, I, Isla about has decided she is. She's just been licking my hands this entire time. That's why I keep looking down in confusion. So if we could. Yes. What is, Francis, what is our last game of the night? All right. We are superhero experts. Well, you guys are. Uh, I'm going to be playing the host of a superhero news show with Alex, Josh, and Jeff, playing experts to talk about a pressing topic of the day. Uh, We're going to get character and topic suggestions from you, the audience. So please, if you Okay, all right. So we, um, so think of this as kind of, you know, some kind of news show. Uh, Francis, the moderator, the host. We're going to be playing characters. The rest of us give us some fictional characters to play, like Wonder Woman, Kim Possible, whatever stuff like that. It can be from any fandom. Yeah, no real, real characters, Jalu, not not just. <laughs> yeah, I know he right Tube Girl. Yeah. Well, that's we know Alex is Tube Girl, but or um, Goat Cheeser. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that'll be the topic. Maybe something with Goat Cheeser will have to be the topic. Goat cheeser sounds like a villain. Feta fetisher. Oh boy. Okay, so characters that ex- there we go. Thank you, Scorpio. Like the Scarlet Witch is one. Um, so, folks, if you see one as they pop up, you like, you can claim it. We got Emma Frost here as another choice. So we got some X Men uh, choices related ones. Everyone else, can you put it in the chat. 
Uh, you can also start thinking about a fun topic, a news topic, something pressing, something, oh my God, what's what's everybody talking about in the superhero world here that we're supposedly in? If someone um, guesses one of my two favorite superhero characters, I will take that that identity and they win a prize that I haven't decided right. what it is. Great. She-Hulk and the Wicked Witch of the West talking about the bizarre fetish of liking green-skinned women. Okay. We have Ch Tinkerbell. Who's, wait, Chandra. Chandra. Chandra Nalar from Magic the Gathering. Ah, mm. thank you. Okay. Is this also from Magic? The, the, that, Wilma, oh. Quinton. Bree, you don't get to because you already know the answer. Oh, were those your favorite characters? Uh, no, Chan no. Uh, Bree, Bree is guessing them because she knows them because she's cheating. Though she <laughs> did misspell one of them. So All right. that one doesn't count. <laughs> so anyway, we got a whole bunch there. If you guys can see the chat, who would you like to be out of those characters? You, you pick somebody to be. They're mostly women, though. That's fine. You know we can play any character. There's no gender thing here, Francis. Come on. I know, but but if you want to play a male character, though. Well, that's uh, tough. <laughs> because I worked in a court for we as long Batman. as I did. We got Batman. We got Batman there. He's a male character. Because I worked in a court for as long as I did, I'm going to take She-Hulk so I can uh, rep some of that lawyer knowledge. Excellent. I, I just watched the, uh, I mean, it was a very teaser She-Hulk footage uh, they released. I did very much enjoy She broke the fourth wall, though. I was happy to see that. She was actually the first character that ever did. In comics? Mm -hmm. Well, in, like, modern superhero comics. I'm certain that mm. there was a lot of, like, I'm going to do this in, like, Mickey Mouse comics. But, yeah. Yeah. I love it. I, I'm like, super excited for that show. I love She-Hulk. You got to be pretty strong to break the fourth wall for the first time. That's right. All right. What do you, uh, Josh, or right, so you're She-Hulk. Who, who do you want to be, Josh? Um, I'm going to take Batman as a gimme. Just because sure. it'll be a nice starting point for me all right let's see who should i be I'm, i was i was really tempted for booster gold but i think i've been booster gold before yeah yeah not that i couldn't do it again uh you know what uh i'll be betty rubble okay um <laughs> uh, from the flintstones because why not i've never been a flintstones character but thank you guys for all these great suggestions um Okay, wait, 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 I, by the way, Taylor I, Swift is re-releasing what is this? Red is that her song? I yeah, she's she's but... doing a she's doing a release of her album with her singing it now as opposed to okay. then. Okay, hold on, she's re-releasing most of her albums. Uh, you're right, she, Bree she Hulk would do this about her comic book sales. It would be funny on her covers. Yes. Um, all right, so what what's the oh sidekicks demanding a pay raise? We got as a, as a topic possibly from uh, Scorpio. What are you doing there, Francis? What are you doing? There? I need to. I'm not going to remember everyone's names, so I'm writing them down. Oh, you're right. I thought you were looking something up for. Our <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, so wait a minute. I have so Alex Batman, is she -Hulk, she Hulk. Josh is Batman. I am Betty Rubble. Okay, I'm going to forget. Okay, thank you. Oh, one stop would have been great too. Thank you, Bridget. Um, all right, you want to go with the, what do you want to do? You want to go with the sidekicks thing? You want to do something else, there, Francis? What do you want the topic? That's pretty much what we got. Side or, you want to bring, just... or you can bring in uh, Taylor Swift as well if you want. I guess. <laughs> Yeah, sh t someone be the superhero, Taylor Swift. No, it'll be the topic. It'll be like, what do you guys think of Taylor Swift's re re uh, mastering her albums? Taylor's version. Yeah, it's Taylor's version. Yeah, as a uh, as a Swifty, I understand. All right, you wanted me to you wanted me to kick you off with the great theme music, <laughs> there, Francis. Are you ready to go? Yeah. Okay. This is super superhero experts, folks. Do 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 do. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to Superhero News. I'm your host, Brucey the Banner Banner. Uh, today we have Batman, Betty Rubble, and She-Hulk to talk about the pressing matters of the day, one of which happens to be that their sidekicks want a little more green. Are they doing enough? Do they deserve it? Let's find out. She-Hulk, I didn't know you had a sidekick. Uh, I actually don't. Um, that has been, I've been very passionate about this topic for a very long time. Um, there's been quite an upright, there's been quite a dialogue among many of the sidekicks and some of them have actually come to me asking for representation for some time now. Um, because generally there is no current effective 
like legislative mandated plan for sidekicks to get any kind of health insurance. There is no requirement for superheroes to fulfill that. And because many superheroes have secret identities, even if there was that requirement, uh, you know, you can kind of dodge it. It's it's pretty easy. Um, hey, uh, oh, so I didn't understand any of that, but I'm 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 kind of like a sidekick because uh, uh, so I, I if that helps me, that'd be great. Because you know, like Barney is a psychic to Fred, and I'm like kind of a psychic to Wilma. And uh, and Fred's really uh, stingy. He doesn't want to give us any money. Uh, so I, I guess he's kind of a superhero. I don't know. He fights dinosaurs or something. Uh, anyway, so I didn't get any of what you just said. It was really uh, sounded really intelligent. But uh, if that helps psychics, that sounds great. Uh, th thank you, thank you, <laughs> Betty, very much. Um, uh, as 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 I was saying, Bruce, um, I, I really do think that this movement is very important, and I think that not only will healthcare for sidekicks really sort of. It, it's been a long time coming, truthfully, with the injuries. I mean, I yeah. myself only got my powers because of of the healthcare system that I was able to be a part of. Um, yes. However, there there are a lot of superheroes that are not fulfilling their obligation as protectors of their wards. Uh, Speaking right, look, of look, which, I think I think we know all who you're talking about, <laughs> and the problem is when you have. 12 sidekicks and one of them's a cow that your son i mean sidekick adopted that's how are you going to provide health care for a cow hmm? it's i don't know i don't know maybe She's being a multi-billionaire that was born into their wealth could help you <laughs> well, uh, i'm not a multi-billionaire i don't know what you're talking about bruce wayne wow who he's a billionaire in gotham who mentioned bruce wayne you said billionaire. I'm from Gotham. There's only one billionaire in Gotham. I could have been referring to the billionaires that live in the area that I live. Yeah. What about the uh, billionaires in uh, Flintstones land, which I forget what that's called. <laughs> Mr. Slade, the man who employs. Uh, Mr. Sl Stone. Yeah, Mr. Slade. That's right. That's where my husband works for. I should know that. <laughs> Wow. Well, hey, do you consider uh, it a superpower to like if you can if you can drive your car real fast by moving your feet by running? Yes. Calves, <laughs> ca have, having calves like iron rods is is that is that what's going on here? Look, look, I understand. You know, uh, I see that this is a bit of a, a touchy subject. So we'll, we'll let's let's talk about something else. Um, you know, there's another pressing matter going on in the world, uh, and that is. Uh, God. And that is the re-release of Taylor Swift's new albums. Uh, as a Swifty myself, I think her music is just so, um, it just, it brings me back to my childhood, whenever that was. Uh, what, what are your thoughts, uh, uh, Betty, what are your thoughts on, on Taylor Swift? Just bring back her old music. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm a total Swifty. I, I love her. Uh... <laughs> That's, uh, she's great. Uh, you know, we go to the uh, local dino, get a diner, not dino, dino. That's a, that's, that's, <laughs> well, dinos can be diners, I think. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, our diner is shaped like a dino, a dinosaur, and we get dino burgers. And, that, you know, that Taylor Swift music is blasting all the time, and we dance and have a great time and drive our cars around with our feet in circles. Uh, and just, yeah, it's awesome. It's great. Yes, I don't know about you, Batman, but I'm feeling 22. How do you feel? <laughs> I, I think it's important for anyone who wants to make more money off of the... Oh, Lord, I'm doing Solonar. Yeah, that's why when he said, it sounds like you're doing Bob's Burgers, I lost my entire mind. Because that is a common comment about Solonar's voice. It's fair. It's fair. Hold on. I am the knight. Okay. So the thing is, if you're going to be re-releasing music... You need to be making billions of dollars on it. This is why I too am re-releasing my uh, freshman album, I Am The Night. Oh, I love that album. It was really good. What was your favorite song from that album? Uh, I think it has to be Standing On Rooftops, Gloaming. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. I remember that one. That was your- Oh, your, I really your... enjoyed um, I Love Underage Sidekicks. On that album, <laughs> underage sidekicks is great. I've been getting a lot of trouble for it. Uh, people think that there's a romantic thing there. There's no romantic thing there. We are the night. 
good. <laughs> um, wait, wait, you're I, saying I, you're not you're not Bruce Wayne? Is that what you're saying? Who? <laughs> She, uh, she the, 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 you brought him up. You, you mentioned him. You're the one who said him. Is that his name? Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's a, he's a billionaire in Gotham. Very important. Now you're can starting you, to sell like strong. <laughs> oh, you guys I really like being the Batman. <laughs> That's so cheat. good actually. Why are you putting on those tights? I told you short green shorts. Don't don't encourage him because he'll just do this in the middle of like just making it's dinner really good. or cleaning the house. I can't help it. It's really good. Wow, you, you seem really you seem much more interesting than Barney. Want to go on a date? Uh, um. Anyway, no, no. Uh, I, I am the man. Yes. Well, uh, hopefully. Um, you know, uh, Bruce Wayne has a blank check with my name on it. Uh, so, She Hulk. <laughs> uh, yes, Chris. Save us. Save us from all of this. <laughs> well, if we're going to talk about the litigation surrounding uh, Taylor Swift's re release, I can probably speak to that to a certain level. Um, though I will tell you Red Bangs, it's a hell of an album filled with bops. Um, yeah. I absolutely use it when I'm working out, it's a stellar album. Um, and I think that if re-releasing it gives her more control over her own creative licenses, I believe that she should. I agree. I agree. Look, anyone who has qualms, as Tammy uh, suggests uh, in the audience, uh, they should just shake it off. All right. Well, I think we've solved so many problems today. I, for one, know that uh, I may never see you guys again because we are never, ever, ever getting back together. So have a good night, everyone. And remember... <laughs> Uh, goat cheese is delicious. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good night. I was like, okay, what's your sign off? <laughs> I thought it was going to be a Taylor Swift reference, but I thought you hit the wall on Taylor Swift references for a second. <laughs> that was impressive. Yeah, how many? Yeah, it was very just. Mwah. <laughs> uh, yeah, let me. By the way, I'm trying to go. I know through you the, got. There's a lot, a lot of, a lot of chats while we were doing that. Thank you, folks, for watching that. One. Um, by the way, Bridget, you were totally not being a troll at all about the Taylor Swift. We worked yeah. it in. It was great. We loved it. Yeah, Thank it you was for fun. being here. It's awesome. A lot of fun. We like. We won't I, get anything. I, I kept bringing everything back to law. It made me feel powerful. <laughs> it was great. You were. You were the one person who was actually helpful on the panel. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah. Bridget said she was going to get minimal wage for sidekicks. There you go. There you go. Uh, this is my friend Kathy, who always refers to you as Ferdinand. So I told her he, she should call you that in the chat. <laughs> Whenever I see her, she's like, "How's Ferdinand doing?" I'm like, "Francis is doing great." <laughs> I was like, "Who's?" Fer I've been I've You're been called Ferdinand. I've been called a lot of things. So that's, that's a, cool. That's the me. Bull movie, right? Is that the animated Bull movie, Ferdinand? Oh, that's right. Yes, it is. it's based yeah. off of a children's book. So people are also were telling me uh, things like Alex was, even though I played a character and I apparently didn't remember anything about the Flintstones. I guess it's Mr. <laughs> Slate. Uh, and thank you, Bridget. It's bedrock. The yeah. Flintstones Lee land. <laughs> I was trying to remember it's bedrock. Yes. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. Uh, hello, Brutes Master. Uh, thanks for watching. I joined in the middle of that. Yeah. Uh, reminds me of, like the Brute Squad from Princess Bride. Uh, let's see here. Oh, Bridget was very happy with the Taylor Swift references. Uh, let's see here. I am, I, I am actually a fan of, of Taylor Swift, so... Again, great, great segment, Scorpio says. All right, good. I'm glad you uh, liked it. <laughs> Bye, Jeff. Bye, Ferdinand. Oh, thanks for watching, Kathy. Oh, wow. That was <laughs> oh, wait, now you're Fernando instead of Ferdinand. <laughs> I'll take Fernando. <laughs> uh, oh, thanks, Bridget. You guys did great, she says. Oh, thank you. That was a great take, great take including the She-Hulk and that with the law angle. Loved it. Hey, there you go, Alex. Thank you. you. All right. There you go, folks. That is uh, Superior Experts. Uh, thank you for your help on that one. Uh, so that pretty much is going to do it for our main show. Remember, if you would like to join us on our after hour show, which is going to start right after we end this, you can go to patreon.com slash super geeked up. Uh, if you pledge $3 or more a month, you can do it right this minute and you can still get access to it right tonight or anytime in the future. Any, any amount is super helpful. really helps us keep doing this show. Uh, thank you so much for everyone who's already pledging and anybody who does so in the future. Again, please do subscribe and like. Uh, put on those notifications, all that good stuff if you uh, if you haven't done it already for our show. 
And uh, let's give one more uh, shout out here to our awesome guests. They can be found over at, whoops, that's the wrong one. That's awesome. Not <laughs> <laughs> that one, that one. Bitly. 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 Don't forget, forget about our guests. Just go read our book. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bitly slash Quid Pro Roll is their awesome Quid Pro Roll podcast, uh, which there's uh, I'm sure a whole ton of episodes that you can catch up on, right? And then get new ones weekly or pretty much. Yeah, generally we try to post weekly, but like I said, you know. We do <laughs> recap episodes every 30 or so. Oh, so that's if great. you go back, you can find our most recent recap and start from there instead of trying to listen to all 120. Oh, wow. Nice. It's like 126 now. But it'll be worth it. Just they campaign episodes. No, oh, fair. Uh, Alpha Comics and Games is the shop Alex co-owns in Richmond, Virginia. You can go there. She obviously knows everything there is to know about comics and games. And she can also tell you great recommendations for sexy comics like she gave for me. Yeah. Uh, uh, Thank you, Kathy, about the great job. Uh, And let's see. uh, Francis, where can they catch you? Oh, uh, I'm at SincereSarcasm.net. You can find the latest episode of Online Friends Simulator on there. Uh, And uh, Eddie K, the other guy. I am the other guy. There I am. You yeah. see my thing. <laughs> uh, I'm Twitter at Super and Instagram. Geeked Up. Supergeekedup.com, folks, is where you can go. Or just this YouTube channel you're watching right now. Lots of geeky stuff. A lot of gaming stuff on there, too. We do a lot of RPGs, actual plays, and how to play videos we've done as well. And uh, my Super Knocked Up series is up there as well. Uh, so huge thanks to Alex and Josh. Thank you guys for being so awesome and fun. I love having you on. <sighs> <laughs> thank you guys this was so much fun yeah i uh, would love to have you on back uh because then we gotta do one true pairing and uh, yes <laughs> i am here i am ready give me the date and i am that's the there. whole show <laughs> that's the right. whole show so true pairing. i'll bring uh, like i'll bring like a little a little whiteboard and like a pointer and i will be like here are my arguments <laughs> <laughs> i have note cards doesn't matter what pairing it is i have an argument prepared uh, I, I do i believe that fully uh <laughs> <laughs> so uh anyway, thank you thank you everybody in the chat thank you so much for joining us for your great comments thank you to all our returning viewers thanks to all the new people who mm-hmm. watched tonight again we would love it if you come back we do this every wednesday night 10 p.m eastern 7 p.m pacific and uh we have different guests on every week and do different geeky games and chat uh brie says thank you everyone y'all did a great job thank you brie thank you so much thank for you, watching all you. your great and by the way awesome choices there gummy bears Something else I agree with you on that was great too, which I can't remember at this moment. Uh, <laughs> but basically, whatever. Whatever you like is great. I just agree with it. Um, so uh, thanks, guys. Hopefully, see some of you for after hours. The uh, rest of you, we'll see you next week. Until then, stay geeky, everybody. Bye. <laughs>